Welcome to this massive Friday night encounter between Geelong and Carlton. And the prevailing mood is the sense of loss after this week's passing of the Geelong legend, Bob Davis, a man who did so much for footy and was a popular personality over many decades here at Channel 7. Dor <laughs> Dorcas Street Beauties, look at the Andrews sisters. <laughs> if they lose, they want you to come in and be the comedian. It's a good job that Lou and they got married to, to one another, <laughs> otherwise they'd made four people run out. <laughs> and to you, those 332 million viewers that have come in every Thursday night, it's bonsoir. There's never been another trio like Jack, Bob and Lou. They really were football's three wise men. For Geelong people and all the footy world, Bob Davis was an iconic figure. He was one of those genuine, gregarious people who made you feel good to be around, had a kind word for everyone and a laugh that was contagious. <laughs> he was the heart and soul of Geelong. Unbelievable. Those who had the good fortune to play alongside him say his ability was unbelievable. His acceleration, that massive stride. No wonder they called him the Geelong Flyer. The 1951 and 1952 teams in which he was a star held the longest unbeaten streak in VFL history. 26 games without defeat. Bobby was an outstanding player. AFL Hall of Fame member, Victorian representative on 13 occasions and a premiership coach. But it's the laughter we'll miss most. Oh, a camera. Oh, that's tremendous. What about that refrigerator I've been eyeing up up there, Lou? <laughs> he made footy fun. And he was humble. Bob claimed no credit for coaching the Cats to the 1963 Premiership. Up now by Hines. This will show us. Hines gets his boot to the ball. Sends a long kick in towards goal. Another goal to Geelong. He was able to bring the best out of those around him. And his incredibly positive attitude touched everyone he met. He took his amiable good humour into television and from Channel 7's pioneering times through to the modern day, he was a firm favourite with the fans. Two, three, for Adam Duncan! We've only got seven seconds to go, so it's good night from Jack, Lou and Robert. Bob Davis to present the 2009 Toyota AFL Premiership Cup. The measure of Bob's greatness was that he transcended generations. He was constantly in touch with today's players, loved talking tactics, and the players in turn cherished his company. He was always around the Geelong Footy Club helping out. And tonight, no doubt, the Cats will have heavy hearts. Bob Davis was a unique character. He was, fair dinkum, unbelievable. Isn't that fantastic? And the number four that Bob wore so brilliantly in the 50s, worn with great pride by another dual premiership player in Andrew Mackey. As out come these all-conquering cats, top of the table, seven wins in a row, and they're up against the Blues, who've won their last three. They've been good, haven't they? Crows, Swans and Saints, they've found a way to get home. Yes, they really might be coming. Their only defeats this year, the Pies, and that draw to Essendon. So their form two is rock solid. Every seat has been sold here. It's a sellout at Etihad Stadium. Brett Ratton, the coach of the Blues, is with Lee Matthews. Thanks for your time, Brett. Now, their stoppage work last week against Collingwood was fantastic. What's the plan to stop that part of the game? I think it's really that surge mentality of, um, you know, Selwood and uh, Stevie J when they get in there. So we're going to have to be uh, on our toes, I think, around the stoppages to make sure that we get our hands on the footy and go the other way. But really important to stop that... Uh, you know, forcing the ball forward and really hurting you on the fly. And cracking their defence. They're so good in the air, the Geelong defence. Is it your uh, small forwards that are going to win it for you? It is. I think it's going to be the contest. Uh, I think they take 17 contested marks uh, in a game and we're about 10. So our ability to get the ball to ground will be so important tonight. Good luck, mate. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Well, Nick, you saw the defence firsthand, the number one defence, Geelong, last week against the Pies. What have the Blues got to do tonight? Yeah, I think the key is Matty Scarlett. We've got to make sure they keep him accountable. Uh, he's so, so good in the air, but also at ground level. So they like to free him up, try and get him loose and really set up, be that general behind the ball. So if they can make him accountable, we'll go a long way to them winning. Well, if they can do that and bring the ball to ground level in their forward line, Jeffy Gartlett and Eddie Betts, they loom pretty large down there. I know you're a big fan of those two. I like and, uh, Jeffy. <laughs> at their best, they're very exciting to watch. And I think that, look, Jared Wade is going to be 
be tough for him tonight. He's going to make sure he doesn't get out Mark because Taylor, Milburn, Scarlett, these guys are so good in the air. Yeah. If they can bring it to ground, it'll bring those guys into the game. They've just got to bring a big contest, those guys, definitely. Now, another interesting fact tonight. First gamer for the Cats, Nathan Vardy. Huge traps on him coming out of Geelong, and he's been backed right in to kick first goal tonight from 50 to 1 down to 13 to 1 with TAB Sports Bet. So I don't know, but I think that means he might be starting forward. Well, the 19 year old certainly does look a likely type. Chris Judd, five time All Australian. Could he win that third Brownlow medal and match the deeds of the other four great men that have done it over the years? And what about Joel Sirwood? What a year he's having leading disposals, contested possessions, clearances, inside 50s for the Cats. He'll lead from the front yet again. This is a big Friday night. This week, the football world said goodbye to one of the greats. Tonight, in a special edition of the Halftime Show, we pay tribute to our friend and colleague, Bob Davis. The football has just been sensational for me. Imposing sight, Etihad Stadium. Friday night football, round nine. Tonight, it's Carlton against Geelong. And alongside Tom Harley and Tom, certainly, it's not just another game. Try as they mate, Geelong can't make it back. No, it's certainly that's the case. It's a Carlton home game, which is the irony. It's certainly been a massive Geelong build-up, obviously. The news of Bobby Davis, the, uh, the prevailing mood around the ground tonight. If we talk about pressure, Andrew Mackey wearing number four tonight. He said it's a famous number down at Geelong, number four. Andrew Mackey's the kind of see him on screen here. He's the kind of player who really embraces the history of the football club. The moment certainly won't be lost on him. Some responsibility tonight then. And Carlton, difficult for them because the publicity has all fallen Geelong's way. It certainly has, but their form, as Bruce mentioned, has been absolutely outstanding. They should go into the game exceptionally confident. Won two of the past three against the Cats and it should be a, a genuine top four game tonight. Standing by for a minute's silence in memory of Bob Davis. Here's Craig Willis. Well, ladies and gentlemen, earlier this week, Australian football lost one of the great figures of our game but a man pivotal to the history of the Geelong Football Club with the passing of Bob Davis. Bob was a star on the field for the Cats, playing in two premierships, a winning selection in the team of the century, before going on to coach the side to the 1963 premiership. In a media career that spanned more than 50 years, Bob Davis played a central role in developing the media interest in the game that we see today. On behalf of the Geelong Football Club, the AFL and all our clubs, we'd like to invite you now to join with the players and umpires to observe a minute's silence for the passing of Hall of Fame member Bob Davis. Thank you. And so it's all about respect. And I've got to say, Tom, that footy fans have become a lot better over the years with that. Oh, there's no doubt. And real credit to Carlton, as we mentioned. It's their home game. And to acknowledge Bob Davis, a Geelong legend, uh, mm -hmm. in that manner, that was fantastic scenes. OK, this time last week, we were getting ready for Collingwood against Geelong on Friday Night Football. It's history now that Geelong won. They're seven out of seven. Any chance of a letdown tonight? Look, I don't think so. They've played in big games now for four or five years, and I'd expect them to be certainly ready for this game. Carlton are up and about, as we've mentioned. It's going to be a top match. Did you see Travis Varko on screen? Great uh, for him to play in the Indigenous round, which is also another moment. In fact, Alan Christensen tossing the coin for the Cats also, yes. but uh, Varko, uh, certainly a key player tonight. Is that who calls? Uh, your call. Heads he call. Heads it is. Cheers, guys. Thanks. First blood for the Cats then. Christensen winning the toss. Indigenous round, as Tom was saying. 
Chris Yaron, outstanding against St Kilda. Career high, 27 possessions. Any chance he gets Varko tonight? Varko coming off just 12 possessions last Friday. Look, I think there is. I think the dangerous small forwards are obviously Chapman and Johnson. You'd reckon Carrazzo, Dyg, and those sort of players would go to those players. So it could be a mouth-watering match-up with uh, Yaron on Travis Varko. OK, Cameron Ling is out of the team tonight. So what is the situation with Chris Judd? What have they got in store for the Blues champ? Well, I reckon we just saw the two players on screen just before Joel Corey's back to fantastic form. And James Kelly. Kelly has taken his game to another level. Expect them to play on and off him. Not a hard tag, almost a head-to-head. -head. The big thing about Judd recently has been how he imposes himself on the game when it's there to be won. No doubt, and Mark Murphy's also elevated his game. Bryce Gibbs is playing a more defensive role, and I like the inclusion of Brock McLean. I think he's so a, really, a really good foil for Chris Judd. Plays the inside role. It's going to be an absolute belter. You must realise this is his big night too, Brock McLean. OK, we're just about set to go. Friday night football from Etihad Stadium. It's the Blues and the Cats. Here's Bruce. Thanks, Dennis. Yeah, big moment for McLean. High draft picked originally, and then Carlton gave up a lot for him to come to the club. Judd, how hard is it, Lee, for Judd to impose himself against a team like the Cats? They're deep and they're very good. Well, they got such a good midfield. you got Joel Selwood and Corey in there and Bartell and Johnson when they... Uh, Pop in. They're not even starting uh, Joel Selwood in the uh, centre square, which is highly uh, unusual. Where is he in there? No, he's not in there. Now Kelly and oh. Johnson's there, Lee, and also Corey, who lined up on Judd. Kelly gets the first kick, so the Cats to the left of screen. Full house at Eddie had Simpson, Laidler, who's the old cat, eh? He played a couple of games, plays against them for the first time tonight. Kelly and Corey oh. early. Handball wide to Hunt. Betts has got him. He rode the tackle on the up air line. Judd gets through, kicks the ball to half forward, looks up Waite, and then Waite goes with a little one, and Garlick's got it in the pocket. Yes, that inside handball from, uh, from Kelly was very, very hopeful, and actually when... I don't know when he even saw the Carlton player, but when, uh, when uh, the tackle was laid, then all of a sudden the turnover creates that space for Carlton Fours to move into. He's their leading goal kick. He's four goals, three from sets. He's 17 goals, nine all up, Garlett. He kicked it very softly and wasn't too far away, so Carlton get the first score, albeit a minor one. That would have been some start. Didn't miss it by much. Milburn back in the team tonight. Just pops it lazily over the top. To good effect, though, Johnson... Drives it just outside the defensive 50. Bartell had some wonderful moments last week. Not his best moment tonight, hopefully. Straight to Gibbs. Gibbs is forward of the wing. Carlton with it by a point. Call his play on. The umpires tonight, Donlan, Vozzo and Armstrong. Kick inside the forward 50. Scarlett did well off balance, got a fist to it. Johnson, here's a voice. Nothing sinister in that. It came from Bartell. Bounces up towards the wing. Laidley goes back. Gibbs further back. And now Thornton. Cross the ball. Stay, James! Need to go forward here, Carlton. They've spent the first part of the game in their forward half. Need to continually get the ball in their forward. Field. So interesting there. Jamison kicked to Diagon, who wasn't sure. He was going to leave it and then knew he had to go. Simpson. So a couple of early disposals for him. Good handball. Russell. Long kick to the pocket, wait the target. Oh, Mark. Mark. He took his chance, he saw it was Milburn and said, I'll take you on. And now he plays on and kicks a goal. <laughs> he does. He's good in first quarters here. And really? I was going to say, Milburn's not his direct opponent, Tom, but he just uh, tried to cover for Scarlett. And you can't put a price on the confidence of slotting a goal like that early in the game. No respect for age there. Just grinned at Milburn, virtually. Ottens goes after the football. Ellard ran into a dead end. Falls to Warnock, who's slung by Selwood. Selwood so good last week. He and Judd over the ball. Judd emerges with it. Off the hands of Hunt. Spills across towards Enright. Judd comes again. Back it comes to Ellard. Wheels out of the pack. His disposal not good last week. Much better with that kick, though. Finds weight on the lead. In short, missed by Garlick. Bounces back to him. Garlick with a man on. Should have gone to Murphy. Hooks it down towards full forward. Still a chance. Walker. Carrazzo. They compete about 20 metres out. Good mark taken by Joel Corey. Coming up to meet that football opposed to Willard. 
clever kick from Grazzo. Brought the ball back on his left foot. Gee, what a last quarter Corey played last week. 11 disposals against Collingwood when things were tough. Over 30 for the match. Pozziadli beaten for it by Jamison. Gibbs prominent. Laidler, big night as we said for him. Oh, Halpin. Kick down low. Betts half volley. Can't quite get it to Garlett. Corey again busy. Ridden into the ground. Boundary throwing. So good start for it. The blue. Blue. Marks here. Gee, OK, so deliberate here. LR's kick. So next to his grandmother on the plane coming across from Perth today. Kath told me everything about his past from Swan Districts. Guilford Grammar out of bounds. Good Gun start. Throw in. Good start by Carlton, isn't it? The ball's been played in their forward half and Wade's got a couple of possessions. With Lonigan out, Scarlett has to play that uh, second big defender, uh, if he's kept occupied stops his attack. Kelly did well Joel Corey inside the defensive 50, Ponzi Adderley got a high bounce and it goes out of bounds, so just for the moment at least it's the old Roper dope from the Cats haven't been forward of centre. It's actually got a pretty similar feel to the start of last week's game, Geelong got the first centre clear against Collingwood Carlton have this time and been able to keep the ball in their front half. Warnock Judd fending off, dropped the ball down, Kelly has got a tackle in the game Free kick to Scotland. Just, no, just working out that Ellard's grand grandmother's at the pointy end of the plane. So the kick across the centre half forward and Diagon marks. <laughs> well, you don't think I'm a man of the people. I was mingling. <laughs> That'll be the go. <laughs> oh, thanks. It was nice of Dennis to go for a walk up and down the plane just to have a look. Oh, listen to you, boys. <laughs> so Diagon with the shot. Real he hasn't, he hasn't real, kicked a goal. Real positive for Carlton being able to play a defensive role, obviously, on Steve Johnson and pushed hard forward. So, can he kick a first goal here? What a pick-up he's been. At the only, there's only two players that have got a lower number than him that have actually played in the AFL this year in terms of the draft. And there he goes. He's got a good temperament, hasn't he? A fantastic start for the Blues. Lots been talked about their small forwards and their ability to get the ball at ground level, but they're actually number two for Mark's inside 50 in the competition. Already three tonight. Could not have started better, the Blues. Young Vardy doing the rucking now. Goes up. They've been beaten by Warnock. Came behind the pack. Kelly taken high. So for the first time, the Cats will go forward. Driven down towards right half forward by Kelly. Runs away from Laidler, former Cat. Just feeds it back. Plenty of time. Russell to Laidler. Hard against the boundary line. Ill directed. Kelly took the mark. Judd took it off him. Brilliant. Feeds the ball into the path of Walker. 15 goals for the season. Walker trying to lay this one off. Loose ball off hands. White leads back in the race. Can he keep it in? Still going, White. Dragged down. The weight of numbers told against him. Coming away as Hunt. That's Taylor Hunt back in the side. We've got a whistle. I think it might have been out of bounds. Oh, what an anticlimax. So what have we got? A boundary throw, and the boundary umpire has pursued the ball out to centre half back. Son yeah. of a well, that's a fair way out, I've got to say. It's a good call, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. What sort of a nong was calling the footy at the time and didn't <laughs> didn't recognise that? <laughs> so it was a good break too for the uh, Blues because the Cats were on, weren't they? Betts gets down low. Carazzo searches. Giscala did well there to keep his feet, but then he's caught. Carlton's tackling impressive. McLean's handball. Walker couldn't tailor. Very good. And then Milburn switches. Bartell. Dygan just brushed him aside for the moment. Murphy looks up. Good kick. To Mark to jump. Great pressure at the moment by Carlton there. Just every time the Geelong player gets the footing, there's a Carlton player now, mate, he's in their ball. face. A lot of energy there. Brett Ratton had energy even as the coach. So I think there's a lot of energy. In the, uh, in the Carlton team. Great tonight. work off the ball here by Andrew Krauser. You just see, just getting in front of, just enough pressure to put the uh, the block on Darren Milburn. Has he kicked a goal for five weeks, Juddy? In fact, he's 07 in the last five weeks. He's been kicking for goal poorly. It's the only thing that's been making him human over the last month or two. And, uh, well, he and Steve Johnson have that in common at the moment. Finding it hard to drill one home, but he has started so well again tonight. 14 points, the margin. Great start by the Blues. Short run into Harry Hold Taylor. There. Hold there, Kate. Press right up uh, Carlton, so Geelong really have to earn their way through. Hawkins, strong grab. Stay. Always his ball. Right on the wing. 
Bartell waits, takes the mark about 80 metres from goal. Bartell wow. lays it off. Selwood beats a couple. Well played. Joel Selwood inside the forward 50. Well, off hands of Warnock, backed up by Scotland, stolen by Barco. Slips a hand pass away. Selwood, another hand pass. Wide of the target initially, backing up is Bartell. Bounces it inside the 50. Podsy Adley, slow motion, just fed it off with a backhander. And now we'll have a whistle. Ball up about 45 metres out from the Cats attacking goal. And my word, they need one right now. Telling statistic down on the bottom there. Nine to two on the inside, 50 count. Stark difference to last Friday's night's game against the Pies. So Vardy doing well here. He's got great physique, a lot of height. Down low handball effective. LR gets it from Armford who played well and a good kick to wait. He goes early, wait, does he? He's a hard man to beat, but the catch ganged up on him there. Scarlett and Taylor, and also Enright was involved. Now Chapman caresses the kick out wide. And the number four gets it. Interesting matchup. It looks like Mackey's actually having a slightly defensive run with roll with Bryce Gibbs. Me, me. So Taylor's kick to half forward. On the man, got hold of his arm. Hey, Joy, thanks. So Hawkins, a recipient. He actually debuted wow. against Carlton in the beginning, yeah. round 207, and kicked three goals at uh, yeah. day or night day, I think it was. Didn't call the game, Tom, you are probably playing, but... Former teammates, are you just wondering yeah. in a situation like that, he might have been out bluffed before, knowing uh, Tom Hawkins' strength through the court. So Hawkins with a good mark on centre wing, and now a chance to kick a goal. And that one always to the skinny side. Just thinking, Tom, he started at a good time, Tom Hawkins, round 2.07. That was a good time to start at Geelong. Travis Varco in the same boat, pretty much, and obviously Joel Selwood. Short one from Stay. Yaron, comes into Gibbs. Move it on. And that game in which Hawkins made his debut was against Carlton. Right here on this ground, and he booted three goals, close to the boundary line. Enright trying to spin out of trouble. Hurriedly onto the boot by Mackey, the number four. Off hands, well done by Leder, getting a fist in there, and it goes out of bounds. So a boundary throw in. Bearing in mind, Geelong went to quarter time last week on Friday Night Football against Collingwood with 2-9. 11 scoring shots, and quite a few of those nine were eminently gettable goals after the boundary throw in. Whistle. And Just that the point you made about the Geelong players who turned up in 207. I reckon a long career, if you aim to lose every third week, you're doing well. Those players have got a lot of losing to do over the next decade, I reckon. Well, last week, Selwood played his 100th. I think in there were 15 losses. Quite remarkable stuff. Going back, Thornton tries to flick it across to McLean. Hung on a long time. Could have almost been a free kick to Bartell. Scotland did nicely. Digan and now Gibbs. Gibbs with a very short kick. A careful one to Russell. Didn't cover the required. Now Russell goes long. A defensive kick. Betts did well. He flew and uh, got the ball to ground. Ellard's been good early. Just banging it forward. Waits outnumbered. He's a good one-on-one -on -one and we know that. Boundary throw in. Good result really there for Carlton. I think we saw the long ball to the uh, the far side wing. I don't think that's their go. I think they've got to be the pinpoint hit up target. Uh, get the get the smaller players on the move. Simpson just held Ottens out, so that was a good result for the Blues. Scarlett searching bets with him. McLean, Milburn, Enright. Ball comes out. Mackey's quick kick away. Gibbs and Digan, and Gibbs did the right thing. Digan's been impressive. Now Russell, he's a long kick, and he kicks the ball beautifully. Lace out. Great kick. There's a lot of Geelong players back in that back 50, so it had to be a really precise lead. Good, strong lead by Wade. He's been day as he often has been. He's a really good first quarter player with certain occasions. Sometimes they can't keep going, but he's been really good early. Well, the next stage is obviously to deliver quarter after quarter. Yeah. Being the senior player, the key forward needs to deliver. I reckon he kicked four on that Monday night in the first term against the Saints when Carlton blew them away when St Kilda were winning everything. Is that coming back? No. Oh. So that's a big miss. That, that quick kick out of that uh, on the opposite wing that went out of bounds, basically it gets the ball into your part of the ground. Yes. And once you've got the ball into your forward line it's so hard now to get it out every two presses up so hard Chapman out of defence then drives it very wide Podsy Adley battles out there with Jamison 
Jamison bidding for strength that time. Diagon looping hand pass over the top. Jamison nowhere to go. Just thrown across the boundary line. Jamison who won the toss tonight. We've got a boundary throw in. Our game's got so much now about position on the field, isn't it? If you can get the ball in your forward half, Stays there a while most of the time. Ottens did well into the path of Chapman. Bounces off a would-be tackler. Gee, they're sharp though, Carlton. Nipping in with Simpson. Kicks it down towards full forward. Missed down there by Taylor. Missed in turn. Just grazing the football was White. And the moment has passed. The hand pass came from Enright to Taylor. Now something good could happen here for the Cats. Taylor Hunt goes in short. Chapman needs to stretch. Couldn't get there. Murphy's got it. That's got to be 50, surely. Taylor Hunt just stood where he liked. Short one comes across looking for Carrazzo, stolen by Duncan. She was a good mark by Duncan. Did I miss something? That no, I reckon, I reckon you're spot on. And Murphy's speed there was just too much for Chapman, and Hunt just took the place on the mark from, mm. from a random position, basically. So Selwood, just the defensive side of the centre, Geelong. Just catching their breath a bit here, you feel, don't you? Chapman's kicks a good one. Enright protected the footy well there against Garland. Right there, hold so all Australia in the last three years, Enright. Kicks the ball to half forward. Pozzianni in late free kick over Halpin. They're going to get the rebound, Carlton, but the courage by Selwood to actually go into the centre square. Not too many teams uh, to... I uh, got that game was to go into the centre square because the zone's so good, but if you can make it, it sets up the open field. Sort of clipped his wing there. So Jamison to Russell to Fulton. So the Blues, careful here. Now to Scotland. This is standard footy, isn't it? Go within 10 metres of the boundary line. If you do turn the ball over, well, then the opposition haven't got really any attacking position to go from. It's interesting, Laidler. One game for the Cats in 09, one game for the Cats in 10. Came to the Blues. They're pretty impressed with him. He's kicked to centre wing. Carazzo, Murphy. Carazzo touched it first. Murphy gave it to Scotland. Wonderful shepherd by Judd. Gave O'Halpin some time. He used it to good effect. Gave it to White. Sends it long to full forward. Open goal beckons. Betts goes in and gets it. Oh, that was terrific by Chris Judd. Buying his teammates some time. Good contested again and again. White. This is really dangerous. I mean, that was really just the Geelong defence pushing up, get over the top, kick a goal. But the speed of the Carlton play is troubling Geelong. Brock McLean, Carlton free kick. Who's free kick? Brock McLean. Brock McLean. So, oh, so much kick. of the build up tonight was about the Geelong fly. Well, right now, Carlton have got the fly, yeah, haven't fly. they? I mean, they're away here. So, Garlett. Outside 50 now, too far you'd think now, does he go short or does he pump it in long here? He hasn't decided with well, a long pump in is the go. Warnock's a big guy. He was manhandled a bit, Milburn. So Milburn kicks the ball to Kelly at half back. And then Kelly down the line. Pozzietti's hands were good, but he's a long, long way from goal. Yeah, right half back. That's a beautiful kick though. Johnson. They stayed off him, Johnson, so he comes across the ground. Having to go back was Mackey. Scarlett, still short of the wing. Mackey, he runs down towards half forward. Selwood comes to mid him, took the hand pass at close quarters. Joel Corey, oh, that's beautiful, to Ottens. That was good class players who had the ball in their hands for three or four possessions. Had to be quick, were quick. And had to work exceptionally hard. I've been really impressed with Carlton's ability to deny Geelong the uh, possession of the ball, working exceptionally well one-on-one. -on -one. Very disciplined outfit, the Blues, at the moment. And you're right, Lee, the, uh, the skilled ball mm. users of Geelong coming to the floor. So an important kick, this one. They're down by 20 points. Haven't seen much of the footy. Ottens, that's sweetly timed. He's got it. That's a terrific kick. Halfway up the post from 50 metres out. He's kicked 249 goals now, Ottens, in about 233 games. So it's a good effort for a Ruckman, yeah. isn't it? To be over a goal a game. And he's kept that average up by that early goal tonight. An important one. Warnock gets over him this time. Selwood getting a lot of ball. G. McLean good there to Simpson. And then Simpson on the wrong side, but he gets it down long. Hunt belts it away. Enright searches for it and then gets it and then gets got himself. Taylor Hunt, well done again, McLean. Good tackle. And then Walker held up, ball up. 
That was brilliant work there by Eddie Betts. Got thrown out of the way by Josh Hunt in the contest. Back straight up and applied the 50 tackle. That's what Brett Ratton loves about his game. Loves, obviously, the frills, but the hard work at ground level. And that's been the hallmark of most of their players. A lot of zip about Carlton so far. The umpire cop one there, and that hurt. Christensen feeds it across towards Scarlett. He kicks it towards midfield. A free kick is going to go to Hawkins. He started better. Hawkins to seven possessions in 75 minutes last Friday. Kicks inside the forward 50. Some hanging on Hold to Vardy. Jordan Russell. Russell's getting the free kick. Thought Vardy was held on to as he approached the football there. Here's Murphy having a fine season. Ditto, Judd. Now Simpson runs beyond the wing. Kicks down towards half four. That was a clever kick. Just looked downfield deep. And that was enough to put Josh Hunt in a lot of trouble. Beautiful kick came back and found Bet. Centering kick then. Out number three to one, Waite was up high. That's a magnificent hand pass over the top there from Enright coming away and sending it towards the wing. On the bounce was Taylor. Wonderful use of the body by Thornton. He's got Gibbs to help him. Well played. Poor kick by Gibbs. McLean. And the boundary shot. Like that, that ball that went into uh, Carlton's forward line, the fact that Waite brought the ball to ground when there was two or three... Geelong defenders in the marking contest. That's exactly what Carlton have to do. Don't let the Geelong defence mark it. Ottens and Warnock, not much in it. Again, Judd with a clearance to Russell. Squares it up. Simpson, a left foot is on the right side. Does he go for goal? He does and gets it. Oh. Just see the boundary throw in here. Great setup here by Carlton. They've got Bryce Gibbs on the defensive side. And, and uh, Jordan Russell is totally unmarked. You can't afford to leave ball users like that. The defensive side of the stoppage squared up and uh, kicked the goal for Carlton. After the bounce, Murphy comes off the line to Gibbs. Throws it on the boot. The high ball wanders out towards the outer side. Bartel. Just an amazing aerialist for his size. Now 50. So Jimmy, as I said earlier, had some wonderful moments last week. No, 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 no. He's actually going back, mate. His impact on the game. He's got to wait for the call, though. That's the thing. I think as you nominated before, Dennis, the game, Vinji might Marks have been one up. inch further over the mark than the Geelong player was on the uh, on the wing here earlier. Well, good fortune for Bartell after a very good mark. Going at the Cats' right second goal. They trail by 20. Bartell slots it. Doesn't kick many goals, but is good at kicking goals, if that makes sense. Let's have a look at this. That's where you can see where the mark is. Yeah, just a couple of steps over. That's he, the 50. He felt Jimmy Bartell was obviously moving off the line, yeah. and he sort of cribbed on the 45, but uh, to no avail. So the Cats get a second. So Ottens and Bartell. Johnson crashes through Bradley oh. and gives to Selwood. 50 metres out and up and under. End of behind. Brilliant play by the Cats. So that's that forward uh, going into that front half of the centre square, attacking the 50 metre line. That's the most critical centre bounce clearance. Selwood does it better than anyone. Gee, how good was Johnson there? I mean, that was ablet like the way he just broke through the yeah. centre square and cut them to ribbons. Where Carl's defensive sweeper has to be really careful to hold his spot there because that's the most dangerous centre clearance to defend. Warnock, good oh. mark. What have you got for us, Richo? I know you, Richo, you're dying to go down there. Yeah, I think that Geelong would be happy to keep the score where it is at the moment. That last centre bounce, they rolled Steve Johnson up on the wing and put Kelly loose behind the ball. They'd be very happy to go in with this break. Carlton have dominated this, this quarter. And that tactic worked too, Johnson, in the play, as Bruce said. Wonderful skills to get out of a very congested situation. Warnock is up, wins it decisively. McLean was pushed in the back. So McLean just easing into the game. Right May have a problem in terms of that contact with the umpire, though. Not sure he can talk his way out of that as it goes down towards the pocket. Taylor reaches up, got a hand to it. Enright tracks it across the boundary. Boundary throw in. Clock stops at 2.20. 27 plays, 14. And on balance, as Richo was making the point, I think, Geelong, well served by the scoreboard because they've been outplayed. And the appetite has certainly come from the Blues. The energy too, in trouble. Scotland, Chapman, 
Hunt. Now Var goes away, carries the ball, slips a hand pass to Johnson. Johnson, that's a beautiful kick. Well, Johnson moments ago set it up from the centre, and that time into the path of Stokes. He really is an artist, John. There's no question about that. He's like a barista who can write your name in the phone. <laughs> Short one comes back to him. But they need him to kick goals, and this is important. The bad defence then by Russell. He allowed the, the, the only space that Johnson could really lead into was where he's gone, and he actually allowed him. He had to get out in front to make sure that uh, leading space was occupied. That is just a wonderful kick on the run. Now it's back with him, and Johnson from 40. Well, he spilt the coffee that time, and it's out of bounds in the pocket. Cam, Cam Mooney's with us tonight. Cam, I think you can hear me, Bruce McAmey. Right Jono's just had trouble with those set shots, hasn't he? He has, Bruce. I think I've uh, put a bit of a cancer through the club, mate. <laughs> We've all got my uh, disease at the moment. We'll get back to Cam. It's in a dangerous Thanks, spot. And you, you, you're deep in attack and you need a goal. But uh, Christensen, well done. And here is Jono. Still with Johnson, and he can't quite get enough on it. I'll tell you one thing, he's impressing all of us as a midfielder right now, isn't yeah. he? So, Laidler, short. Oof. Just Cam, a quick one. Are you surprised about Johnson's ability to play well through the midfield? Oh, no, not at all, Bruce. He's, uh, he's got a, a huge engine, as Tommy will tell you. He's, He's a uh, beat test when he first got to the club around 15, 16, so he's got a huge engine, so he's been dying to get in there for about three or four years, so he's finally got there. Melbourne went to Selwood, now that would be interesting to see again. It was odd. That's it there. Mark's right here. It finished up high. Selwood was taken high, but that slide up the arm. He has that ability to make tackles do that. Maybe in a step late as well. Anyway, Kelly oblivious to all of that, but the beneficiary slides it across the face and through for a minor score. So it's quarter time, and that flatters the Cats. 27 plays 15. Carlton 4-3, Geelong 2-3. Carlton came out of the blocks. The build-up had been all about Geelong. Well, suddenly, it was all about Calvin. Let's go down to Richo. Well, Rats, really solid start. What do you feel like you did right that quarter? I thought we won the 50-50s, and the centre bounce was really good, and we kept their backs really uh, honest. I think their uh, their ability to counter-attack and scale it and these types, we sort of... Uh, you know, couldn't allow them to get in the game, and I thought Waits, influence, and Garlic with the pressure was outstanding. What about when the ball gets out into open space? Do you feel like you've got an advantage on the spread? Uh, I think Simpson and Murphy have really sort of uh, got a fair bit of ball outside and with some run and carry, so hopefully we can continue that through the game. Thanks, Rats. Good on you, Richard. So, Friday night footy, Rats pretty happy about all of that. The Blues lead by 12 points over the catch. It's 27 to 15. time on Friday Night Football. Mitch Duncan missing a late goal there right on the quarter time siren. Leaves the Cats 12 points down, 27 to 15. All single goal kickers. Ellard's been busy, so too Gibbs and Laidler and Joel Selwood carrying on from where he left off last week. I'm with Nick Maxwell now. Nick, those little guys on the forward line for Carlton buzzing around again. So far not a lot of damage, but they cause problems, even for the great players. Matthew Scarlett got caught out in that opening too. They do, yeah. Now, Matty Scarlett, we know how good he is, and we talked about him before the game. He's about 80 metres off the ball here, so he's the last Geelong defender. Now, he's got here we go, Eddie Betts about 40, 50 metres away, and Scarlett's got that much confidence in his Geelong teammates that he pushes up to be an attacking player. 
Instead, the ball comes over the back and Brad Ottens is the one who's forced to chase uh, Eddie Betts back. And, of course, he can't do it. He can't keep up with him. So, uh, being that last man defence there, it's good to get a goal against his name. Well, the buyer has been bad karma as far as most clubs are concerned this season. In fact, all of them. So, uh, do you see that myth being busted tonight? Because Carlton have come out so sharp. So far they have, but I think Geelong have proven over so long that they're such a good team over four quarters. So, they need to make sure that they stick those tackles like they have been that first quarter. OK, we'll find out what the heck will happen next. Here's Bruce. Thanks, Dennis. So, 12 points. It's interesting with the bye because Carlton played on the Friday night against the Swans and they had a big gap until the Monday night against the Saints and only one day extra, really. Even though they had the bye last round, only one day extra coming into Friday night. So, they've come in with a similar gap to the Swans and the Saints where they won both those matches. Yeah. I don't know about the first five or six, years, six, five or six weeks of the season, but once you get into seven or eight weeks, you know, I reckon the bye is going to be an enormous help to what you're going to do when you return from that. And they look super sharp, there's yeah. no doubt about it. Their pressure inside their forward 50 has been a real highlight tonight. So start of the second term here on Friday Night Footy. And first break to Murphy and Scotland. High ball in right, has got to get under it for a long, long time. Wait did very well, and now Garlett should kick a goal. What a start for the Blues. Boy, we've seen it again. That was a fantastic contest by Wait to make sure that the ball came to ground when it went. That high ball went into half forward. He won't get a stat for that. I don't even know if he'll get a spoil. But this is to make sure that Geelong don't mark the footy. He makes the genuine contest and then a good knock on. And again, coming from a centre clearance, we're just seeing how valuable they are getting the ball inside your forward 50. Scotland this time running around the back of the centre stoppage. A great contest. As you can see, three on one it was, and just surged the ball forward. And Jeff Garlett, he's as dangerous as anyone in the competition in that situation. In the twinkling of an eye, it's out to 18 points. Here's Richard. There's my boy, Jeff. He, I really like the way he goes about it, small forwards. Chris Sharon had a very disappointing first quarter. Didn't have a touch, started on the bench. That's probably a positive for the Blues at this stage, though. Mine. Touchless in Seattle. We've got another bounce. Chris Yaron looking on for the moment. That's what happens when you're touchless. <laughs> Matthew Stokes is his direct opponent, so a defensive role from the Geelong small forward. Warnock with a backhander. Spills to Duncan. Ran into a dead end. Lindsay, I'll have it. Thank you. Dumped by Donlan. Seems OK now. Mission control for both clubs. Judd out of the middle towards half forward. Knocked on intelligently down there by Carrazzo in the opposite direction. Hunt. Judd left it behind. Mackey backs out of the pack. Slips a hand pass away. Corey under pressure. Kelly, Mackey and now Varco. Barco pushes up towards the wing. Chapman run down. Terrific chase. Affected the kick. Spills towards half forward. Murphy and passes to Laidler. Laidler beyond the wing. Walker comes up. Again the pace of Carlton causing the Cats concerns. Chapman thought he was free. O'Halpin fisted away there by Scarlett. Running after the football. Duncan into the arms of Ellard. Well done by Selwood. Gives it across to Milburn. Trying to get to the footy there was Hawkins. Getting a hand in with Thornton. Crumbing it though, Christensen. Gives it across to Barker. Back to Christensen. Chapman comes across on the angle. Has got support outside. Goes to Bartell. Bartell long. This could bounce through for a goal. It does. He's got his second. Jimmy Bartell in stellar form. Kicking at goals. They had the extra numbers forward of the ball, Geelong, so they were always think, going to think their way through well, and we've said many times, Bartell doesn't miss at all. Do you know he's the leading goal kicker at the club this year with 10? Yeah. Kick goals in seven of the eight. This is one eight nine games for him. That's exactly the same as Bobby Davis finished up with, the one eight nine. so he's doing that number justice tonight. Kelly run down, he had it a while. Varco getting a bit busier. Taylor was able to thread his way through. Doesn't get far to an old cat in Laidler. Well, he's not that old, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Out wide. Russell, little toe poke didn't work. Johnson, still Stevie J had the rear vision mirror working well there. Now Selwood, beautiful kick. Oh. Cut off though by Jamison Duncan. Back to Christensen. Good tackle by the Blues. Oh. Coming from Ellard. Well done though by Kelly. Heavy traffic, Taylor Hunt 
Scotland fended off clever well done and then that's out of place a boundary throw in that's a great passage of footy from both sides there you can see what Geelong were trying to do the pressure from Carlton was outstanding certainly a high intensity game at the moment have a look at this tackle here by Jeremy Laidler perfect technique pinned the arm took Christensen to ground well Tommy Hawkins needs to get the hands out in front that's twice now the fist has come in from Thornton along the boundary from Scotland coming across on the angle Hunt Ball somehow gets through to Walker. Fourth man in the queue. Beautiful centering kick. O'Halpin. He will go into an open goal. O'Halpin puts it through. Good centre here. Again, the aerial work of the the Carlton big forwards. Not as much their marking. They weight's got a couple, but they're making sure the Geelong big defenders aren't. After the bounce, Kelly comes away. High ball down towards half forward. Going back, Christensen. Forced to Laidler. Around the boundary. Carrazzo off his fingertips and out of bounds. Interesting when they have applied the pressure, the Blues. Almost anticipating the hand pass. They're getting across in front of the man they think it will go to. Such is the general feeling amongst opposing sides that the Cats first inclination is to hand pass here's Selwood which he does hand passes Stokes nothing wrong with that Johnson run down Selwood deep in the pocket works it back brilliant absolutely brilliant yes that's advantaging your uh, your teammate isn't it he knew the space in front was occupied by by Digan so he just kicked the ball into the space over the top allowed uh, Chapman just to take a step or two back into the footy take an easy mark that's where the space was, deep. So Selwood just demanding that Chapman just peel off and go back and take the mark and now hoping he can convert, and he does. Important goal, that one just stems things, quietens things down because the Blues were gathering momentum. Chapman gets the goal, Cam Mooney looking on. Just Selwood's influence in the last couple of minutes, Cam. Yeah, he's very important, isn't he, Bruce? I mean, like everyone, I'm a huge fan of Joel's, and you know, that was just an amazing kick inside to Chappie. Uh, you know, not too many people would see that. Most people would have a, a bit of a kick for goal, and you know, that just shows how special he is. Careful with that word, Cam. Now, Betts gets it to Gibbs, and then Gibbs to fall forward. Good contest, one-on-one. -on -one. Well, well done, Walker, in the end. Simpson over the top of Taylor Hunt, free kick. Right. Threw it away. Hey, Gibbs. Kate Simpson. No, it's Kate Simpson's, mate. Uh, can I have it? Yeah. Nah, come on. <laughs> Worth a try. Nothing wrong with Kate, though. Yeah. No, they're both good shots at goal. It's not Percy Jones. So far, this has been good for the Blues because every time Geelong have kicked one, they've been yeah, able to get one back in a hurry. They've been pretty accurate in front of goal. What a fine player he is. 128 consecutive games now. Hasn't missed a match for about five years. It'll be a goal. It came back, and the Blues stretch the lead again. Sips has got two. Just see the stat down there on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Eight to two inside 50 tackles. Carlton lead the competition for tackles inside 50. That's where they generate a lot of their pressure and convert from goals, and certainly excelling again tonight. The two-second stringers battle there. O'Halpin. Quick had to go after it on the deck. Chapman, Duncan, feeds it out wide. Christensen down towards half forward. Coming up Laidler. He's been solid, hasn't he? Yeah. Back on the side. Missed the game against the Saints. Swings it out wide. Trying to get the ball to run on was Gibbs, but he didn't know that Mackey was cruising in behind. So Mackey, the number four, cool as a cucumber. Crowd not happy, of course. Saw the boundary umpire just glaring at the central field umpire saying, did he... Do that deliberately? Maybe you did. We touched on it earlier. Bobby Davis's old number, number four, being worn by the young South Australian Andrew Mackey tonight. At Geelong, I guess Gary Ablett was the best thing boys, since Bennett. sliced bread. Bob Davis was the best thing before sliced bread. <laughs> and I guess Polly Farmer was sliced bread. <laughs> well done, Dennis. And you're not going to pick number four for anything tonight, are you? No. If you're the umps. So Scotland from Murphy. Scotland did really well there, finding his way through. Murphy with some real pace, then switches it up. Slow handball. Russell breaks the tackle. Carazzo. Carazzo to full forward. 
The fly from Walker, Betts at the back. Oh, he fell over, Eddie. He spent it before he had it, and then he flicks it out. The ball comes out to Enright. Well played, Mackey. And then Enright kicks a beauty to Stevie J in the back half. Oh, had a high tackle, Stevie J, and then cut off. Waits been terrific in those one-on-ones. He hasn't got the legs, and Scarlett takes well. the mark. So since the Blues got the first three goals, it's been goal for goal in this match. And the other side, Selwood, up high, couldn't hang on, falls in front to Christensen, goes after the football, met solidly by Enright, Christensen hurt. What do I say, friendly fire? Yeah, sure. Carrazzo <coughs> waits, has to go back, wait, looks towards the middle, his best effort, McLean. Johnson met him, McLean, into the back of the Geelong player. Down goes Taylor Hunt, meantime, throwing himself in. Duncan Hillard was hard at the ball for Carlton. In the opposite direction comes Chapman, and we'll have a ball out. And the Carlton supporters have risen this run because that's the kind of desperation that just permeates through the team when they just keep getting there to lock the ball in their forward line, would not let it out. So Ottens wins the tap. Chapman... Just denying them some time and yeah, space, absolutely. aren't they? Didn't have a prior opportunity. It's been a lot of talk about Geelong Thanks, kicking Mike, the ball more this year, but in this particular quarter, you just see it there. Geelong back to the handball happy way, which is a reflection of the pressure that Carlton are putting in and around the ball. They're doing the Collingwood on them at the moment, aren't they, a bit? From that... oh, yes, Carlton. Back here, back to now. Stay there. So Diagon again, he kicked a goal in the opening term. Not suggesting he'll do that this time. Kicks the ball. So 20 metres out, weight so important in this match. Garlett, weight took Garlett's ball, bounces oh. it through. Well, oh, Scarlett on the line. Oh. Been really impressed with both the tall Carlton forwards and the small ones. They've been in the marking yeah. contest and butted up beautifully. On that occasion, it was weight brought the ball to ground, but actually retrieved his own crumbs. Well, the champion defender came to the fore there, didn't he? Mackey, the clearing kick, high towards the wing. Rodzi Adley got a hand to it. Armfield arrives quickly. Varko came through, left the ball behind. Jamison stayed in the same spot and beat everybody. Kicks inside the forward 50. Mackey needs to go back, did well. Knocked it down in front. Walker slings it out, taken by Garlick. Garlick comes back to Gibbs. Gibbs measures the kick. But he's way off target. It bounces through barely for a behind. This was almost the uh, the bounce going to go out. But it's like the, the, Car the Carlton big forwards have said to the little guys, we're going to make sure if we can't mark it, it's coming to ground. You just get there to support us at ground level. And that trust between each other and that partnership As you is can working see, really well. Starlet gave a damn. <laughs> I feel like Carlton's got their foot on Geelong's throat right now, don't you? Next five minutes, if they can kick another couple at the moment, it's in their half of the ground, and Geelong have got to get it down the other end. Corey was clever there. Now Sirwood runs hard. Kelly and Corey run with him. Corey to Kelly now. It bounces. Kelly, 50 out, looks up, well played. But coming late was Sir Yaron. He's so good at that. Stokes must have thought it was his ball. Kelly ricochets off one of his own Geelong players, held up. And the Blues hang on, Richo down to you, Richo. Ball was already there. Richo. Geelong have got to get something out of their tall forwards. At the moment, Podsy, Adley, Hawkins and Vardy, four touches between them. Down the other end, Wade is running a mark and Satanta is bringing the ball to ground. Selwood taken to ground. He's got to get a free kick in the back. Selwood, time back on. Unfortunately for one of the game's there, outstanding there, players, a lot of people get on his back. There's evidence there, no pun intended, but... Because he gets these free kicks, well, he plays like a man who wants the footy. Johnson reaps the benefit, gets the goal. Indeed. Geelong scoring is going to come from that midfield group, isn't it? Not at Salwood, Cali, Johnson, Bartell, they got to, and Chapman. They're going to win the ball, and they're probably going to have to do the scoring. You just see the ball coming in here. This is where Steve Johnson has been playing a bit more in the midfield, but hits the ball, hits the pack, I should say, at genuine speed. Just one of those players who can do things on instinct. He's been up and about, obviously hasn't been converting this season. So I guess that's a positive when you look at the conversion rate. Too many set shots. He's better on yeah. the run than he is with the set shots over the mark just lately. One of those mad scientists. Just doesn't want to think <laughs> his way too much through it. <laughs> he hasn't kicked multiple goals, Steve Johnson, uh, in his last seven matches, which is a long yeah. string for him. 
They'd love four or five from him tonight. He's getting plenty of the ball. Murphy rides the tackle. They've been efficient, the Cats. I mean, that's what's keeping them in the game, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely no doubt about that, Bruce. You've looked at the inside 50 count. It's only the 14 to Geelong, but they've had the eight scoring shots. So, Carrazzo kicks to Sanafo. Betts is quickly off the mark. Couldn't take the mark and then fell over. Then Milburn slung it to Taylor Hunt, to Corey, to Duncan. First match that Eddie had tonight. Lovely kick. Gee, he just drilled it out wide, didn't he? Caressed it in the end at Stokes. I tell you what, Joel Corey is hurting Chris Judd going the other way at the moment. Had an important ten minutes, Corey. Mm. Judd playing such great footy in burst, doesn't he? So Stokes, good-looking kick. Holding the line, going through. Geelong get two in a row for the first time tonight. Now that's little Jagamuni. Ah. Well, if this were Dancing with the Stars and we were scoring it on artistic merit, Carlton would be about five goals in front. But as it is, they lead by just eight points. Geelong coming at them. Judd's second possession of the term. Back goes Otten's ball into the ground. Tried to dig it out. Hunt did well. Knocked it across towards Duncan. Duncan's kick is marked by Diagon. Diagon squares the ball. Pushing up the ground, Jamison. He's come back to football in very good form. Oh, what a terrific mark. Low, hard kick. And Wake took it so cleanly. Wake pinpoints the kick. Garlic marks about 12 metres behind the man on the mark, but they count it from the kicker. Very, very good defender, Enright, but I think the small, quick blokes are the one type of player that just troubles him a little bit in that, in, with that burst of acceleration. Really brave ball use into the yeah. forward 50. So Gallup will kick from about 40 metres out just to restore the balance. He's put it through. That's a terrific effort. Gets his second goal. To see this is Carlton's forward 50, and we'd see Garlett just come up at the footy in between the two Geelong defenders there. As mentioned before, that's a really brave kick. You turn the ball over there, you're in your strife, but the option was right, and the end result was a goal to the Blues. So Judd, as Dennis said a moment ago, two disposals in this turn. Make that three, but a couple of clearances. Wait, so good a moment ago. Goes to ground, Bartell gets it from Mackey. The kick to Duncan. Duncan's been busy. And then Duncan, another lovely kick to Podsy Adley. Down low, tries to half volley, slung off it in the end, and then Jamison taps it over the line. He's a good defender, Jamison, isn't he? He's oh, really... yeah. He's got that timing of the fist. So unless uh, you get a step ahead, he gets the fist in as the ball arrives. Boundary throw in. Warnock taps it down in front. Corey going to the ground, released it nicely. Christensen, a little one-two. Got it from Farco. Kicks inside the forward 50. Ottens needed to make a contest, and he did. But it falls to Gibbs. He crumbed it, comes away. Simpson. On the lead, Yaron. Murphy is long. Yaron just the one mark. Hasn't had a possession. That's hard to do, actually. Obviously, whatever came next wasn't flash. There's Murphy. Into Gibbs. Back it comes, Thornton. Drives it across the ground. Dygan, little short one. Scotland, so... They change tack, the Blues. On our broadcast side now, Scotland goes inside the forward. 50, Garlett was coming up. Well done by Taylor, went back, took the mark. Milburn, Taylor Hunt, confusing. Drives it up towards the wing. Good mark. That was terrific by Scotland. What a good player he's become. Having a wonderful year, Dennis. I mean, just so consistent. So, Jamison. Judd. Good hands. Then inside. Russell. Well done, Laidler. And then Laidler. Not a good kick. Mackey's put it to the ground. Gets a second crack. Little give. End right. Cleverly done. Hunt. Natural left footer. Cats bring it through the back end of the corridor. Chapman from Stokes. Milburn, still Milburn. They get it through to Stevie J. Johnson. Back to Chapman. Chapman looked up. He had nowhere really to go. They've had to buy some time here. Now, Taylor Hunt 
kicks the ball to Varco. Well done, though, by Russell. Judd breaking the tackle. Well done. He's getting busy, Judd. He hurt us, Bruce. Simpson on the outer side. Rapier like kick. Carranza towards half forward. Ill directed, though, under the chest of Enright as if he was the forward. Milburn just sends it inside. Selwood. Leisurely bounce, runs himself into double trouble. The second man oh, got him. Ellard now in the back. Doesn't he play it well, though? He senses when the tackle's about to come oh. and makes it very hard to lay an effective tackle. The indecision from Joel Sell came about by the defensive positioning of Bryce Gibbs and Jeremy Laidler filling up the hole. Right there! In the Carlton back line. I've got to say that Kathy was a very placid woman. At least she struck me that way on the play. She didn't strike me, but uh, she'd be very upset at the moment. There goes the kick downwards, full forward from Chapman. They come from all directions. Almost Ottens it falls in front. Over the football Stokes. Tried to give it to Podsy Adley. In goes Thornton. He's taken by Podsy Adley. They almost took the air out of the footy and will have a ball up. So the Cats pressing here for the moment, inside their 50. A couple of goals down before half-time. Warnock Ottens just got rid of him a little. Armfield Watton's good stuff. And then wins the other clearance. Goes back to Kelly. Touched off the boot by Murphy. Laidler's been really good. And then Scotland broke the tackle. That was terrific to Armfield. Armfield's dangerous kick. Might be dangerous for the Cats. Let's see. Last man standing. He was good. Scarlett, he's done that before. Hunt. Kicks the ball towards centre half forward. Johnson dropped it. Looked for a free. Simpson robbed him. Pickpocketed the Stevie J. And then Vardy back to Chapman. Back he goes to Milburn. Milburn's little left footer very wide. Johnson covering plenty of ground. Stevie J from the pocket. Kicks to the goals and oh, gives. Yes. His dad used to do that, Bruce, didn't he? Did he, he? Yeah, he could fly. Wouldn't he fly? From the bays. Yeah, he could take a screamer. Oh. You coached him, didn't you, Dan? Oh, well, I did. I didn't bring it up for that reason, but he could fly. <laughs> <laughs> I taught him nothing in that regard. In fact, I taught him nothing. <laughs> There's Jamison. Out of defence. Long kick towards the wing. Oh, strong mark taken by Taylor. But Ross Gibbs could take a mark, and his son up every centimetre is high right there. Milburn. Untidy, well done by Josh Hunt. Just get the feeling balance is starting to change here. Momentum is suddenly wearing the hoops. Bartell's got the football man on the mark, is 50 out. Margin is 13 points, but it's closing. Certainly an attitude. Four and a half minutes out, Bartell. He's already got two, Jimmy. And you get the feeling he likes his chances from here. Kick is on the way, offline and through for a minus goal. I'm sure there are a couple of goals in front, Carlton, but I'm sure Brett Ratt will be thinking, what do I do with Chris Yaron? He's not getting the ball back there because Stokes is playing that defensive forward role really well, but I'm, we're, we're in front. Do we just hold our line or do you think about putting him somewhere else, up on a wing, right there, John. somewhere uh, rather than that back 30? He's is able to be tagged out of the games back, uh, back there. Right there. Quite regularly this year. Just one disposal tonight. He had a career high 26 in his last match against the Saints. But he has had a few days where he oh. hardly touched it. Ball kick and Selwood cuts it off, and Johnson's got it. Oh. Big turnover, isn't it? What's the betting, Bruce? You're a betting well, man, Stevie J. Stevie J. From set shots, we know that he's uh, he's one goal three before tonight. Now he missed one completely tonight, so. We'll give him uh, still one goal three. Oh, I reckon he's... Uh... No, he'll kick it. That's what I reckon. <laughs> he's got two, and the Cats close. Cam, the Cats have had uh, nine inside 50s this quarter for five goals, too. Super efficient. Was there a plan from a forward point of view going into the game? No, I'm not particularly, Tommy. I just think the biggest thing, I think you touched on a bit earlier, we're just over handballing at the moment. If we start kicking the ball, which I think we've done the last five minutes, you know, results start to happen, and I think that's what's happened in the last five minutes. We started kicking the ball a little bit more. Chad Hobbling, as you can see, he gave it to Murphy, who kicks inside the forward 50. The goal would be nice here for the Blues. In right in trouble. Hits for the boundary line. Yaron did well in a tight situation. Carranzo hard against the line. High ball towards the goal. Hit the post. It beat the players and hit the post. 
Got a feeling Yaron's been pushed into the forward line for Carlton. Uh, you, you, you need to be prepared to change that, and there's... Mm. Just kicked no, uh, Duncan's his body. Was. Right in the side. He's certainly hobbling no. on the way off the ground at this Free point. Free kick now. Doesn't look too good. Taylor Hunt comes across towards right half back. Oh, Just got the feeling there that Cam Mooney wanted to call Tom Harley skip. <laughs> Couldn't bring himself to do it. It's media. Short one comes back. Josh Hunt. Taylor Hunt. Goes across the ground. Nice kick to Milburn. Two and a half minutes to go. Stokes. Corey. About 55 metres out, Corey. Looking for Johnson. Coming up was Gibbs. Tackled. In goes Selwood. Wins the football. Gets the free kick. <laughs> he is the back on. Well, if you go in half crouch, there's a fair chance you'll get a high contact. I mean, it's just good technique. Right there. He never goes in upright, Selwood. He's always crouched over the footy. But he uses so the arm, the doesn't he? got him high. What do you do? He uses the arm. That elbow comes up and the arm slides down from the bicep to the neck. He's had four of eight free kicks for the Cats. Mm. Richo. Yeah, Chris Judd came from the ground there. Right foot injury, looked like an impact injury. As he came off, he definitely mouthed the words foot to the physio, went straight down the race into the room. So we'll keep an eye on that. He did it. So Gibbs in the back half. Cats closing in. They might be in front of half time the way they're going, or at least level. Taylor inside. In right. Just feel like they're playing on their terms, don't you? It's, a, it's got a bit more comfortable for them in the last 10 minutes. Lovely kick to the pocket. Couldn't take the mark, Johnson. But he has got those multiple goals tonight. Carazzo, McLean, off a step, not a good kick. Mackey's got hold of it. You hit the nail on the head, Bruce Geelong, really controlling the tempo of the game, starting to accumulate the possessions. Now up to 183 to Carlton's 168. Pochiat in a good position. He was always in the right spot there, the big pod. Tom, you, can he go all the way here? Yeah, I think he can. He's a, he's a, a very sweet timer of the ball and obviously perfect conditions. He actually does well here. I mean, we know he's a skilled stadium. Yeah. Specials, but he's averaged just four goals a match that he had. And I think the indoor stadium, I mean, the 50 metre line really, almost all the players can carry that 55 metres here. Just to make it all square, is it going to come back? Bouncing ball, is it oh. going? Hawkins has put them level. Well, I guess that's the first contribution. It was amazing that the two big forwards got the goal between them. Podge Adley got the mark, Hawk has got that crumb goal. They haven't been able to get involved in the player a whole lot. It really is this Geelong midfield group that are just starting to take a bit of control, run the ball through, use it well. And you see Diagon was on screen just moments before. He was furious with Armfield, I think it was. It's a Cardinal swim. When the ball goes in deep, we'll see it here from Podge Adley. Cardinal swim from defenders not to get the ball through there. So they've flown, but really only one up. It was Satantaro Halp and left... Uh, and you've got to be goal side on that occasion. So we just watched Tom Hawkins. He's actually flown for the ball, got round the back, need to get goal side as a defender. Wow. So scores are level. Who would have thought it? Ellard goes after the football, was taken high, no free kick. Down goes Selwood. Ellard comes again, well played, young man. Falling to the ground, put it into the path of Murphy. Murphy, a long kick. This is a live ball marked right on the line by Scarlett. Sorry. Or is it Harry? It's Harry who took the mark. Oops. Sorry, Harry. He's not arguing about whether it's a stat or not, is he? Sorry, is that no score? He kicked no it before score. the score. No, no, no score. Yeah, no yeah, score. Yeah, yeah. He kicked it before the side. Go well, we nailed that one, Bruce. It's half time. Well, sort of. It's hard getting free kicks, though. Joel Selwood. Cut lip as you can see. How about this, then? They came right back to the Cats after trailing by 12 points. It went up further than that, but halftime on Friday Night Football, suddenly it's 8-6 apiece. This week, the football world said goodbye to one of the greats. Tonight, in a special edition of the Halftime Show, we pay tribute to our friend and colleague, Bob Davis. The football has just been sensational for me. 
The Halftime Show, brought to you by Bendigo Bank. That's a pretty scene. Etihad Stadium on a Friday night. Chilly night in Melbourne. Halftime scores are level. And inside, a crowd at halftime in excess of 48,000. 48,312. Chris Judd seems to be okay. 13 possessions for the major break. Game high is Joel Selwood. He's had 19. Off the Blues, Mark Murphy 15. Hit Scotland 15. And Leighton has got 13. Chapman in the foreground there, 13 for his side. Steve Johnson 14. James Kelly 14. So everything to play for. Right now we're halfway to a draw. Eight, six apiece after the margin was 12 points. Carlton's way at quarter time. Lee Matthews is down on the boundary with Chris Scott. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for your time. Well, that second half of the quarter, that sort of, where'd it come from? Well, we started to win the ball a bit more. It's simple stuff, isn't it? Mm. I mean, the first quarter and a half was terrible footy. We were really disappointed with it. The last 15 minutes, I felt like we at least got the ball forward a bit more, and that's a result of winning the ball in the contest. And we feel like if we can even up the inside 50s, we should win the game. And your forward efficiency, fantastic. Eight goals from 23 entries. Yeah, it's keeping us in it somehow. Yeah. I mean, I think we're well down um, in terms of the way the game's being played, and we need to turn it around quickly because we can't keep that efficiency up for the whole game, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks for your time. All the best. Interesting to see if there are any changes. Interesting Johnson's role in the first half. Certainly pushed up the ground top. I reckon he's been up and about, and he hasn't necessarily converted it, uh, his possessions into goals so far this season, but every time he's been near the ball, particularly forward of centre he's looked very dangerous and he got that one goal from a uh, short range snap and certainly in adding an extra dimension to Geelong tonight. We were talking about the karma of the bye well the second half will test that. Well Geelong have typically had very strong second and uh, sorry third and fourth quarters but Carlton also this season have finished their games exceptionally strongly so interesting to see what they'll do with the sub. David Wojcinski's the sub for Geelong add some extra leg speed and Mitch Robertson providing a little bit of uh, a little bit of flexibility. We see Jim Bartell moving to the bench, so clearly using their rotations. Well, he's kicked a couple of goals, Jimmy. He's never kicked four in a game. Four times three. So, had a chance to kick his third just before half-time and narrowly missed. So, everything to play for, as I mentioned. Five with a draw. Five wins and a draw for the Blues. And seven out of seven for the Cats. Cats, so impressive last week on Friday Night Football. Buttering up again. Chris Judd started that second term slowly, was working his way back into the game, but then inadvertently kicked the shin of Mitch Duncan, and that hurt. So he hobbled off the ground. As I said, though, still having a good game and quite an impact. And that young man, Vardy, still trying to get into the game, Nathan Vardy. Second half. At the Dome, Friday Night Football, Ottens taps it down, Yaron coughs it up, breaking away Selwood, his 20th possession, sends it inside the forward 50, Podsy Adley created space for the footy, it bounces on, that is first possession, a good one, Christensen, oh, it may have brushed the fat bit, it did. There you go. G2 Kids A combining there, two of their debutants this year, Vardy to Christensen, it was a slick handball, wasn't it? So the Cats leader for the first time tonight. So close to being a goal in front. Walker. Haven't seen a lot of him tonight. Dropped it down. Mackey. Was that a handball? Selwood well played again. She's been dominant. Taylor. Duncan liked his game and slaps the handball back to Taylor. Dropped it down. Simpson looked for the free. Duncan pushes. Christensen's been busy. Varko haven't seen a lot of him, but he's a good finisher. And the Cats are seven points in front. All of a sudden. How did that happen? Just watch uh, Christensen there. Let up Jeremy Layton. Then just had the awareness just to give the ball at the right time. Follow up with the block to uh, to Travis Varko. Fantastic play from the young player. And that's what he can do, Travis Varko. Christensen did well as well. Duncan out of the middle. Chips it out wide. Here's that man again, Varko. Varko long towards the pocket. Off hands or with their hands in the back. It's going to be a free kick. It's going to Geelong. Nathan Vardy will get the free. Joel, let's go, mate. 
Right, let's, doesn't matter, mate. Hand the back. That's the line. Mark's here. Well, no force, but it doesn't matter. It's the signage of it. It's when you see the palm on the back of the hand clear indicated the umpire hands him back. If they were to dust the prints, they would have been there. There goes the kick. Hits the post. Good effort by Vardy. Interesting, too, that Varko getting involved. As I said, capable of very good things. Underrated for so long, he may have become overrated. Does that make sense? <laughs> but you know what I mean. Russell goes in short. Whoops. Off hands. Dyag and a half chance. Murphy under pressure. Carlton looking very ordinary at the moment. Out of bounds. Lee's just come back after Chris Scott's interview. Lee Varko's kicked a beautiful goal. And suddenly the cats are flying away. Yes, all of a sudden it's been a big change the last 50 minutes of play. He kicked three goals, five to a point in that time, Lee. So eight scoring shots to one. Well done by Stokes getting through. Johnson spent it before he actually had it. Then looks up, kicks to Varko. Gee, he's been busy since halftime. Come on. Kicked the right. running goal Thanks. after the little deft handle from Christensen. Worked up to just the eight possessions so far. Stephen Johnson involved again. But it just highlights again. Geelong have had the two centre clears, get the ball inside their forward 50, and once it's in there, you've got the opportunity to keep it in there. Okay, so much class around the asked. ground, the small mediums in their forward half. So Varko looking good. He's kicked two goals in a few minutes, and Geelong burst away here. pretty consistent. It's a great confidence booster when you've got uh, not only the physical doing of it, but the confidence that we're going to play the game out strong. And is that the kind of thing as a coach you're aware of those statistics yeah. you reinforce that at oh, half time? Absolutely. Push it, push it, push it. Make players believe in their fitness. Out of the middle, Kelly floats one down towards half forward. Varko goes back after it. Could have almost been pushed in the back. Murphy spins around. McLean, arm field, tips it wide. Well grabbed out there by Carazzo. Goes down towards half forward on the lead. It's taken by White. Now he's about 80 metres from home. And they need something, a bit of a spark here because in the twinkling of an eye, they've fallen 14 points off the pace. There's Garlett on the lead. Good hands again. White and then Garlett. Now he could really go the way here. He doesn't want to. Goes back inside to Laidler. Nothing much going there because the Cats have got the numbers back. What a beautiful challenge this is for the Blues. We say they're a better team, top four material. Now face a big, big test. 14 points down, weights fly. Kelly tried to take them on. Bartel very good. It was a hot foot. He got it to Corey. Corey got it across to Duncan, who's been excellent. Ooh. Taylor Hunt spirals the ball forward. Ooh. Thornton, still Thornton. Gets to Digan. Now McLean on here, if Digan can get it to him, he did. And McLean can go inside. Now Scotland normally a good kick. Scotland has been busy in this game, goes down towards half forward. Off the hand there of the leader player. That was a halpin, but eventually a combination of hand passes finished up with Scarlett through midfield. Vardy having an impact now, went to Stokes. Out wide, oh, Selwood into the path of Varko, coming across on the angle. Gibbs did brilliantly. Knocked it out of bounds. Just see Chris Judd on screen there. Just been watching him at the start of this quarter. Not convinced he's covering the ground like he was in the first half. It's clearly hampered by the foot injury. Warnock knocked it down in front. Carranza bouncing around in there. Controlled it. Warnock kept it across towards Thornton. Back to Carranza. Judd to Laidler. Comes across half back. Well, third man in the queue got it. Well worked. Garlett gave it to O'Halpin. Now Walker running into an open goal. They'll kick this. He's kicked 15 this season. Make it 16. And he goes and he gets it. To see the Geelong press right up. And it's happened a couple of times. Not Walker, the beneficiary on this occasion. Just starting the centre clear. Chris Judd actually starting forward for Carlton. So maybe he can exert himself in the forward 50 as opposed to the centre clearance. Well, the Cats have kicked six of the previous seven goals before Walker's very important one there. So the margin back to manageable. Simpson tried to take a couple on. Kelly's tackle was terrific. Mine. Duck, no duck. 
So Cameron Ling, who probably would have had the job on Chris Judd, had the shoulder injury, so the captain behind the coach. Judd, by the way, gone forward here. Now inside the forward 50 for the Blues. Played the least game time of anyone in the first half. Garlett making the ball sit almost. Corey ran across. Walker hurled up. Bits. This would be something. Can the... No, well done. <laughs> well done, Scarlett. Not for the first time tonight. Plays the goalkeeping role. Well, as you mentioned, Chris Judd forward. I think he's at his most dangerous as a forward bursting out of the square. I'm not convinced he's got that burst in his legs at the moment with the sore foot. Mackey, a high ball towards the wing. Off hands, Murphy roving the pack. Some indecision there between a couple of blues, but Murphy, Murphy. helped out there by a high tackle. Darren. Murphy coming up for his 18th possession. That's the football on the wing. Now there's a man on bets. Nobody near him inside the forward 50. They come to him now, but the long kick could have dragged him up to the footy. As it was, they went short. Ellard's got it from Murphy. Goes across the ground. Gibbs has it. Man on the mark is standing in the middle. Well, just to the side now of the centre circles. Armfield. So a laborious build up here, but they're still controlling the footy. Simpson back inside. Now Gibbs is a good kick, needs to go. Ellard is on. Ellard's got the football. Well, took, took a lot of precise kicks though, didn't it? About four precise kicks to get them within scoring distance. That's your line. Mark's right here. You can just see Eli just at the top of the uh, the right screen there, coming through the middle now. Worked his way through the Geelong, uh, Geelong zone pretty well. Take a good kick from here. From about 45, 45 degree angle. Eli gives it a ride and just slides it across the face. Just been watching Chris Judd for the last 30 seconds from here. He's not totally debilitated, so he can't be on the field, but he's certainly... A couple of yards short, he is just hobbling a little bit in his running action. Selwood from Mackey. Heard the umpire's call, so Selwood forced to go. It's a sweet kick in the end, actually. His field Hang kicking on. is so impressive. Not quite so sure in front of goal. Enright's kick Hang wide on. to Scarlett. Scarlett to Mackey, who's worked hard here. Back to Scarlett. Back to Hunt. Normally a long, long kick, and that's what he does. Dangerous footy. Beats everybody. Armfield and Chapman. Armfield, could he get a handball? He did well. Gets it to Thornton. And then Thornton. Oh, gee, Dygan protected the football brilliantly. And now Murphy who can run. Varco and Murphy. That's a good race. A little kick inside. And again, a good mark. And that's the difference about getting your hands out in the marking contest that Richo and Nick Maxwell were talking about at halftime. So walk a wide to Scotland. Scotland. Down towards right half forward then. Judd comes across on the angle and marks about 55 metres out from goal. Just pops it over the top of the man on the mark. And the mark is taken by Yaron, who was made to earn it, as they say. Old-fashioned jargon. That's right. Yaron disappointing early. He's had some wonderful games. He's coming up for just his second kick. As I mentioned, a career-high 27 at his last outing and suddenly back in the hole tonight. Centres this one. They'll come from all directions, or will they? In from the side, O'Halpin. Up against Ottens. Oh, clever by Walker, like a basketballer. Dribbled it to himself. It goes back to Ottens. And Ottens very keen to force it behind. Gave it to Scarlett like a hot potato, and Scarlett took it across the line. Just really strong mark there by Andrew Walker, getting his arms out. We've commented a couple of times, Tom Hawkins in that same situation, preferring to take the ball on the chest, but if you get your arms out like that, you can't get the ball spoiled. So Enright to Milburn, back to Selwood, rushed over, boundary throw in. The camps to down there. Cam, what are your thoughts of the early stages of the second half? Yeah, a bit like the first quarter, Bruce. They really jump us early, and but I think we've just settled down a little bit now. But, uh, you know, Colin have really got to play the last probably the five minutes, so hopefully we can just get back on top. The Blues have had a good little stretch here. Milburn back, switches it. Chapman, then Chapman. A typical chappy kick. He got the angle just right, didn't he? And finds Pozziadli. So a long way from home, the Pods. Kicks the ball to about 50 metres. Hawkins and Thornton. Stay there. So a little victory for Thornton. 
McLean. McLean, this needs to be precise, and it's not. Missed by Taylor Hunt, but then did very well to work his way past his rival Scotland. It comes across to Selwood from Bartell. In short, Johnson. Well, it was a much simpler mark than he made it look. What was that? Just jumped early, really misread the... He thought that was... This is the free kick, clearly. But Johnson, he just thought there was a defender was right on his back, I think, and tried to... Uh, Body the defender who actually wasn't there. Well, it was worth probably a seven and a half for artistic merit. We discussed that before as Johnson snaps, but he failed to mark the ball initially, almost redeemed himself with his snap, didn't miss by much. He's not far away now, Stevie J. In good form, finding the football in the first half, two goals to the major break. Thornton with a short pass needed to be careful and wise. And he ha hasn't kicked multiple goals since the semi final last year, so. We're on the money, I reckon, Dennis. He's ready to have a big impact, not only with disposals, but on the scoreboard. Oh, Halpin, shabby kick. Carlton have got to be better than that if they're to beat this team. Enright snaffled it up. Got it to Selwood. Got it to Kelly. That's not a good kick either. And Jamison in the back half. So Jamison out wide. Gee, Garlett looks the most likely, doesn't he? Bad handball. Scotland, well played. Gibbs, so much a general Gibbs. Kicks the ball to half forward. And well done, Scarlett. How good was that? And just a goal in it. Cats lead it after the Blues. Made all the early running. Geelong steamed back for half, before half time. And then got to a comfortable 14 point lead early in this half. Chapman. Nice. No gap there. You lifted your arm up and it went hush. You lifted your arm up and it went up, mate. Scarlett Come coming on. up. Just peeled off his man. Got all ball. It's about now during about halfway through the third quarter where the coaches start to think about activating their sub. Uh, Wojcinski for the Cats and Robinson for the Blues. Wojcinski was so good last week too. He's a bit stiff to be where he is. There's Varka, but Christensen had been sort of earning that. His mail was going to this sub. There's the kick from Varka down towards half forward. Clears Johnson on the lead, runs free behind. Russell gets back. Oh, well done, Russell. The much maligned Russell. Well, reaching high was Hunt, knocked it down to his own advantage, stolen by Ellard, slips a hand pass to Gibbs, Gibbs goes over the top, off the interchange gate there, and coming quickly was Milburn, knocked it away from Carrazzo, legged was Christensen, advantage will be paid, Milburn goes across the ground, now let's watch Vardy, Vardy gathers, gives it to Stokes, Stokes sees Podsy Adley, puts it in front of him, Podsy Adley takes the mark, he can wheel around, Centering kick, beautifully done. Barco, well, he misjudged it completely. It comes to Otten's back to Barco. What can he do here? He pulls a rabbit out of his boot and kicks his third goal. He makes some ends. Talked a lot about numbers tonight. Mackie with the number four. The number five's been a pretty famous number for Geelong over the years too. And doing it proud tonight, so... Varko has won 72 out of the 83 matches he's played in. That's right, he's won 72 out of 83. Might be helping Geelong improve his average because he's kicked three goals in this quarter. Scotland to Simpson. And Carlton have been a resilient team this year. The kick, Murphy did everything but control it. Looked back towards Judd. I've liked Duncan's game. Well played, Carazzo. Judd, arm field, back in board. Simpson, still Simpson, back to Judd, off a step, wayward kick, boundary throw in. He's doing a tough, the champ, isn't he? Just a bit fumbly around there, the Blues are really clean early in the game. Maybe it's the extra pressure the Cats are putting on at the moment. We'd love to see them handle the ball a bit more cleanly around the stoppage. Oh, he's knocks it down in front, Scarlett, again with wonderful poise. Stokes just dancing on the spot, out of defence, beautiful kick finds Johnson. Johnson just shy of centre-half back. Looks to the outer side. Ponzi Adley favoured by the kick. Jamison trying to go back hard, but Ponzi Adley, hard man to shift. Ponzi Adley, that awards hard forward. Deceptive kick. That was clever. Hawkins takes the mark. 75 metres out. Not his best effort. Bartell, though, made it look OK. Ponzi Adley pops up again. But the kick not so flash that time. Marked by Wait. Deep in his own defence. Play-on's the call. McLean. 
coming up to his 12th possession to Yaron. Had a quiet night. Your big second half by Yaron would help. Dangerous ball inside by Diagon. Well done, Scotland. Carazzo had to find his way through a maze and then kicks the ball to Jamison. Clever kick. Good bounce. Jamison to turn Pozziadli inside out and then kick the ball to half forward. Cats with the numbers. Scarlett so good. Hunt, oh. not so good. Back to Garlett. Garlett to full four. And Walker went very high. Does he give a free kick away? No, boundary throw. Interesting to look there to see the spoils on screen. Chris Judd's come off. At the same time, Chris Judd came off. So did Warnock and Wait. Mm. So they actually don't have a tall target to kick to in their forward 50. Josh Hunt makes the blue sometimes their beauties. They're not concealed blues. Now the free kick is going to the blues. No, no, it was a leap and over the top of spoil. No. So Murphy no, no. will take it's it, jump. tackled high. How can you see? You're going to the contest marks now. Got great vision. Just in this last couple of minutes of play, they push Yaron back into the back half again. I think that's good coaching, actually. Give him a, a risk, a go in the forward line, break them. Uh, the tag, but put him back because they need his run off halfback really to create their flow. And Scarlett's defence was he was too close to it. In comes Murphy and he kicks the goal. They needed that one. Everybody enjoying the footy here tonight. It's been a terrific match and Carlton still hanging around, aren't they, by getting the scoreboard to tick. Murphy, an important player going forward now in the Ford 50. Judd in the centre square. Warnock looked at Ottens. Chapman down to Kelly. Well done, Ellard. Terrific stuff. Free kick, Carlton. The tackle on Kelly. Free, free kick to Carlton. The tackle free on kick Kelly. Carlton. Tackle. The tackle on Kelly. So the tackle should, on Kelly. Yep. Should be Ellard's Sorry, kick. For holding Back the ball? Here. Yes. Holding the ball. Yes. Throw it out. Yes. Throw it out. The umpire Sorry, away, give it to Scotland. Away Scotland. from the Scotland, play, yes. played that free kick. Hey, Scotland. Hey, Scotland. I thought the tackler just knocked the ball out. Back here, back here, Jay. And I think the tackler was in yeah. but um, so let's have a look. Not that one. Anyway, of course, man. Scotland to bang it forward. Wait. Oh. Oh. Yes, Andrew Walker. No. 50. Oh, and a 50. So Wade takes a speck, he Walker gets the free and gets the 50 and scores a level. Bit of history there between the umpire and Matthew Scarlett. Yeah. Has an interesting exchange of performance. Not necessarily sure I agree with the tone of the umpire talking to players like that, but uh, when you do talk back to an umpire, you never win. I guarantee you'll never win, and if there's a decision where it might go, Against you, they'll pull the trigger and get done every time. Well, it's clear he didn't like him last time around, wasn't it? <laughs> it seemed a case like that, Dennis, yeah. yeah. To have just saw how dangerous weight can be, too, with a high ball forward. Yeah, that's the free for the hold around the waist. We know that. It was the uh, it was the next uh, the next bit of uh, abuse or whatever the umpire paid gave make it a certain goal. Richard. That's shaping as the match-winning jewel, Taylor and Waite. But Tom Hawkins was a loose man behind the ball there. Needed to have more of an impact at that contest. Penwell back at the game. Here's a chance for Ottens. Dives after the football. And it's not coming out. Scores our level. Five minutes out from three-quarter time. Thanks, Brad. So, did we take that to mean that both subs have been activated Marty, suddenly? And the clean's off now, and uh, Robinson's on for the Blues. Okay. Vardy for Wojcicki. Yeah, and Wojcicki for Vardy, Dennis. Okay, when did that happen, Bruce? In the last 30 seconds. Oh, good, Bruce. I, I thought I'd missed it for a moment. A uh, boundary throw and outside the 50. It's one part of the game. You do enjoy the substitution activation, Dennis. He doesn't. <laughs> no. Tossed in. Knocked down by Hawkins. Gibbs goes after it. Close to the boundary line, Selwood. Well played, Gibbs. Just getting a hand in there. And out of bounds it goes. You've never missed a moment in your life, Dennis. You're onto it. So Vardy off, Wojcicki on. So Wojcicki, Robinson, two impact-type players, aren't they? Let's see if they can have an impact in this game. The Blues have done a good job here. 
Scotland. Well, that's a poor kick. Oh. Duncan missed it. He made it much harder than it really was. I think he was looking for the extra points there. <laughs> and there's Robinson completely involved. Gibbs ducking down low. Christensen, well done. And Scotland just got rid of Jono. And Judd's handball was a beauty. To Betts, to Nigan, <laughs> to Simpson. They're rolling the blues. Scotland to Murphy down low. Good build up. Oh, bad, oh, bad kick. He had two options. And Taylor and Bartell mess it up. In the end, they didn't mess it up, but the Cats did it away. Help me, Dennis. A couple of chances there both ways, Bruce. <laughs> it comes eventually to Christensen. Lays it off to Bartell. Oh, too slow. Garlett got him, came from nowhere, Garlett. I think Garlett makes a lot of people look slow, doesn't he? Oh, that's as exciting 90 seconds of football as we've seen all season. Russell, good grab. Lays it off, Murphy, Walker, can he get another? Runs inside the 50, it's bending back. It hit the fat bit. <laughs> that was great. Look at that Thank speed. You. Short one comes to end right, and suddenly, just for a moment, some respite. It's a well-weighted kick. We'll get to Taylor. Must get a free. What? No free kick. Right. I'm at a loss, Bruce. Uh, tell you what's happened, Dennis. What's happened, Bruce? Carlton's in front. <laughs> Did I forget to mention that? No, no. <laughs> the Blues have clawed their way back here. Oh, that's good. Poggiadli up the ground at the moment, taking Jamison with him. He's had a lot of ball on centre wing. Wojcicki held up. Why wasn't that a free kick to Harry Taylor moments ago? Anybody? Um, I'm not sure. So, what's the early Of course, the didn't blow his whistle. Uh, <laughs> always pragmatic. The voice of always reason. Pragmatic. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't blow his whistle. All I know is he didn't blow his whistle. Yeah, no, no, yeah. That was probably a free, wasn't it? Well played, chat. Read it beautifully. Looks up. Kicks to centre half forward. Otten's playing forward. Stokes at the back. Great tackle by Yaron. Brilliant. No prior opportunity. No prior opportunity. He's taken possession a couple of steps and he's been tackling. Thanks, mate. I think that's a good enough decision, but Yaron could just do with a break, couldn't he? Yep. He could just do with a break to get a free, easy kick. What a oh. brilliant illustration. Garlett and Yaron in the last minute, their ability to run yeah, plays yeah. down. Buttons had it, then lost it. Stokes again. He's had enough of it. Stokes hey, doesn't want it in the next 30 right? seconds. I mean, free kick too long. Again. There's no need, all right? Free kick too long. I think that was an abuse free kick. Oh, no. Well, I've got to say, Stay I back. thought that if you had the footy and you tried to kick it and you missed, it was there. holding the right ball. Out, thanks, guys. And Stokes Sorry? seemed Just to fit that. Yes. There it is then. So this is interesting from the umpires in the last five minutes. One all, I think, the counties. Now, this is a big one, though, isn't it? Stokes directly in front, hurts the Blues, puts a throw. again. Oh. Hey, just relax, all right? Free kick too long. There's no need, all right? Free kick too long. No need. So that's the explanation. So a big penalty Dagen pays, and so do the Blues. Murphy out of the centre to half forward. Taylor couldn't quite. Mackey on the left. What a magnificent quarter of footy it's been. Murphy very busy. Slow Scotland. Well, he did well in the end to accelerate to Robinson. How did he find that footy? And how did Warnock get down that low? It's pretty hard at his height. Wojcinski, so both the subs getting involved. Hawkins rode the tackle all right. Hamble out. Varko's kicked three in this quarter. High tackle. Gets it to Selwood. Could Joel go all the way? 50 metres out. A behind. Cam, so just Cam, we just saw a 50 metre penalty or a free kick. Because just how hard is it to hold your tongue when the pressure's right on? Uh, well, as you know, mate, my record's not too great with them, so it is quite hard. Uh, Darren Milburn finds it a little bit hard as well, and a little bit surprised there with Scarlett. He's usually pretty good with it. Well, it's one always Dennis said with Scarlett and in a moment ago. As Chapman, added by Hawkins, 
Floats it towards the pocket. Laidler heads for the boundary line. It's out. So Joel Selwood now up to a game high 26 possessions. Just one behind him is Mark Murphy. And I would imagine the three Brownlow votes could go to one of those guys whose ever team wins. Selwood probably got them last week. He's in rare form. Christensen trying to feed it back. Dygan trying to make a man stolen away by Kelly with the outside of the boot. James Kelly missed by quite a margin. Really good test here for young Dyke. Well, he's not so young, but he's young in terms of games experience. Gave away the 50-metre penalty. He'd be really keen to set a tone. Bit of a turn over there. So good test in his uh, early in his career. So big minute here. Blues can't afford to cough up a late goal here. They've done well to stay in touch. Geelong has thrown a lot at them in this term. Warnock and Hawkins. Well played by, I think, Carazzo it was. And then oh, Halpin squeezes to centre wing. Was that uh, off the boot boundary throw-in? Carazzo picks himself up. Just a finger in the eye, I think. Oh, yeah. Just a little slap in the face. So Warnock. Hawkins hanging on. Kelly tries to break Scotland. High fend off. High fend off. Draws Heath. High fend off. Heath Scotland. No, no. Heath Scotland. Heath Scotland. Heath Scotland. Time on. Play on. So can the Blues push forward here? They're defending at the moment. Taking their time to get the ball forward. Now here's an opportunity. Has Thornton got enough on the kick? Walker has kicked a couple of goals in this quarter. One little hope here. Probably not now. Back inside. So Geelong with a Varco burst at the start of this term. Give themselves a seven-point lead at three-quarter time. Both teams have been very good in the final quarters this year. Geelong hasn't lost a final term. We know that. Can Carlton raise an effort again as they've done in their last three matches? A lot to play for here on Friday night at Eddie Hard. It's 76 to 83. Friday night continues to turn it on for us. Another thriller. The Cats up by seven points. They kicked away the lead by 14 early in that third quarter, but Carlton came storming back. It's 12-11 to 11-10. Richo is standing by with Brenton Sanderson. Well, Sandow, it's been a tough, hard battle all night. Ebbs and flows. Do you think the game will open up at all? Yeah, I think it will. I think, obviously, uh, the pattern of play all this season has been uh, late in games. Obviously, the last quarter of the game will open up a little bit, so it's really been really strong. We've scored really well in the uh, last quarter of games this season, so hopefully that's the case again tonight. It has been a strength for you guys this year. What's the most important thing you've got to do to win this quarter? I know, I know every coach mentions it, but contested ball. I mean, uh, they smashed us in the first quarter. They looked really dangerous when we were second to the footy. Uh, I think since quarter time, we've been a lot better with our method around the ball. It just seems to be working for us. And Chris Chard looks to be carrying an injury. That probably helps you guys not having him in the bounces there. Yeah, we're going to try and rotate some fresh players through him as much as yeah. we can. We can see that he's hobbling around a little bit, so a bit of a, uh, I guess, a plan for us to try and put fresh players through him where we can. Thanks, Sander. No worries, Richard. As I mentioned earlier, yeah, thanks, Richard. We saw Geelong get out to that 14-point lead early in the third term. Thanks mainly to Travis Barco. Those early goals, he was in stellar form. He was. He kicked three goals in that quarter, three goals straight, too. He's all class. He uh, kicked one on the run here. You're going to see one that's a mark and then one is a snap, so he's doing it all for Geelong. You would think with he and Johnson in form, you'd like them from here, but momentum shifted late in that term. Yeah, exactly right. Carlton sticks with Geelong. At the moment, Geelong really, they're on top of them, but Carlton just, they're hanging in there. They're hanging in there, so we're hoping they can stay with them. We saw Brock McLean there subbed out of the game. Are you surprised given Judd's fitness at the moment? Nah, it takes a quality player to stay with Judd injured or not, so I think that, uh, you know, the throwing forward is going to get a lot of respect there too. So are Carlton going to limp with Juddy to four points? Let's see. OK, we're about to find out. Here's Bruce. Don't often getting a Collingwood captain barricade for Carlton, but of course if the Blues can win tonight, 
the Pies will go back on top if they can beat the Crows on the weekend. Great to have Nick back playing for Collingwood too on Sunday. So interesting stuff with Richo, wasn't it, and Sando with the Judd and the tactics they'll use. Big roar, close to 50,000. Been a magnificent match. Warnock, Robinson, Van Hamble gets back though. Probably should have won a free kick and then got turned. Kelly so good in close. Diagon, Corey switches a handball. The spread on Wojcinski and Murphy. Wojcinski to Chapman. Carazzo, Murphy, good tackle. He's been terrific, Murphy. Oh, he has. Tackle the melee, ball spin. We've Continue. seen Chris Judd lift Colling, lift Carlton up from sort of really difficult situations. Mark Murphy's probably going to have to be the one tonight. He's played a fantastic game. Now can he really find another gear in this final deciding term? Ottens lays it down. Corey couldn't quite. Kelly kicks to about 20 metres. Yaron belts it away. Ball in dispute. Well done, Gibbs. Laidler slow to react. He had to get the ball away. No one to kick it to. Kicked the ball as far as he could without it going out, obviously. Duncan, back to Chapman. And Chapman, I think, pretty happy. Yeah, I'm probably not sure here. Can I blow my whistle before you do your whistle? OK, throw it in. Got away with one there, Paul Chapman. Yeah. Clearly took on the second tackle, but obviously got to the boundary line. Ottens, Warnock, Kelly again in this quarter to Chapman. Takes them on, Chappie, hard man to tackle. We've known that for a while. Brilliant down low, Bartel, Wojcinski and Varko has just missed. What about Bartel's take and handle on the And Kelly's clearances, he's had 11 clearances, Kelly. He's been uh, terrific at uh, taking the ball clear from those stoppages. 18 so, contested possessions also for James Kelly. Game, isn't it? 24, yeah, yeah outstanding. Game. So again, Carlton asked a big question here by the Cats. Carazzo, does he get a kick away? He does, but it's well, it just eluded Milburn. Enright, Judd Milburn, back to Enright, back to Kelly again. Now Kelly to Hunt, lovely left foot. Chapman up and about in the last quarter. And then Chapman, lovely kick. Couldn't quite hold on to it though, Podsy Adley. Jamison, Stokes, finds some time and space, Stokes, and then kicks the ball to about 15, 10 metres in the end. Yeah, and oh, Varko, brilliant. Bartel, back to Varko. Just miscue, and Gibbs able to cut it off. So Geelong have had a couple of chances here to stretch the lead. Just need a couple of cool heads from Carlton, just get back the tempo. Now we've gone Gibbs to Murphy to Judd. She had the three prime movers for the Blues. They are number one to number one to the bloke that's always been number one. And now Scotland. But was number three. He was. And it was a good number one with Hodgie as well. So Scotland, he had the most disposals to three-quarter time with 27. Ottens, big fist over the top. Murphy cleverly. Garlett looking inside, nothing on. Pulls it back towards the attacking 50. In from the side, terrific grab in right. Hey, Jordan, hop! What a fine defender he is. Just pops it over the oh. top. Well, sure to fix him. Mark is taken by Simpson, going back with the flight of the ball. A little too casual there. Simpson, had a pretty good night tonight. Right on the wing at the interchange gates. He goes down towards the attacking 50. Milburn sets himself, knocked away by O'Halpin. Runs to number four, grabbed there by Mackey. Straight to 34. Diagon looks inside the 50, sets it up. Wants something of weight down there. He's opposed to three cats. It falls at their feet, falling over the football. Warnock, Warnock was cast in the role of a rover there, which, fair to say, didn't suit him. Seen the odd, the odd big defender who hasn't got confidence like just try and punch when the ball's in the air when they can get two hands on it. Not the Geelong big defenders. If they can get two hands at the footy, they go for the mark. Warnock and Ottens. Warnock wins the tap back. Ellard. Back it comes from Walker to wait to Russell. And then Russell. Oh, oh. Jackson! Oh. <laughs> She suddenly oh. had opened up for bets and the ball mm. eluded him with the bounce. Thought it came off his foot. Russell kicked a very big goal against the Crows when they started this winning streak. Is that a mark? No. Oh. Oh, over anxious. Just got to be careful when, uh, when the teammates over the footy just not to be over anxious and jump on him. That was a chance for holding the ball that went begging for Carlton. Christensen short. Corey. Nice. Tapping away, kicks inside the forward 50. 
Laidler in 10 on front, possession over, committed, Stokes gets behind him, running goal and well done Laidler. Now that's holding the ball. It's played a great game Jeremy Laidler, started on Tom Hawkins, was outsized but looks far more confident on the smaller play and a terrific rundown chase. Yep, it's done to the football, but willing to work his way back into it. Thornton comes to Scotland, to Simpson, he's on the wing. Close to the boundary line, Simpson. Again, looking to set it up this time for O'Halpin. Didn't make a very good fest of it. Judd, oh, brilliant gather by the champ. Goes with the left foot. How does he manage this? It's supernatural. <laughs> right him off at your own peril. I was, I was about to say about two minutes ago, even Chris Judd can't play when he can only run 80%. Because he is only running 80%. But just at least on that occasion, he ran onto the footy in a fantastic left foot finish. Now that the one hand pick up on the left, which you'd assume is his non-preferred. Drops it down sweetly on his left foot, which is definitely his non-preferred, and straight through the middle. That is textbook. Somebody said to you, how does Chris Judd play the game? You'd love to play that bit of footage, wouldn't you? Yeah. Not only is he the captain, he's the spiritual leader as well. Well, success is where opportunity meets preparation. I mean, he had the opportunity and just knew how to finish. What a moment in this match that might turn out to be. The wounded skipper against the odds. Oh, this will be holding the ball. Oh, God, done it. Straight up now, straight up. I feel Thank like you. the Cats had Thank a chance you. early in this quarter, didn't you? And they didn't quite take it. And now maybe it's the Blues' turn. Carazzo. Back to a one-point game. Kicks the ball to centre half forward. LR drops it down. Walker. Oh. It's interesting what Brett Ratton said early in the game that the, the uh, uh, Geelong defence takes 17 marks a game, like contested type marks. And they've tried that. At least that's the one part of the game Carlton have really stopped them doing. Got to ask you, Dennis, have you got that feeling? Had it at half time, Bruce, when the scores were level. <laughs> Still there. Corey goes to the outer side. Awkward bouncing football. Yaron stayed on his feet. Barco went to Grand. Yaron finds Russell. I think his parents think his given names are much maligned. Russell kicks inside the forward 50. Oh! That's a jump. Hung from eternity. Jump. No way through. It's like a forward pack there. Walker tries to. Lend a little muscle after this effort. I reckon his first game he had a launch it's like right. that and uh, marked it. Provides a real focal point for them up forward at the moment. Oh, Halpin and Hawkins. Murphy. Still Murphy. Got it way through but uh, held up. And Milburn and Walker boundary throw in. One free kick. Came off the top of the knee. Top of the knee. Top of the knee. Go through Jay. Go through. Go through Jay to throw in. So I heard the explanation. So would wounded for the moment, top of the knee. Yeah, that, that, the way Wade and Walker have launched themselves with the footy, I mean, if you can't mark it, make sure you defend it, the opposition defenders can't. I mean, that's just been fantastic, the way Carlton have done. Gio Halpin was good to Judd, to Simpson. Oh. What a beautifully constructed forward move there, the tap by the Irishman to the champion. Has there been a player who takes his side on his back more than Chris Judd? I think Wayne Carey certainly did for the Kangaroos. There's no question about that. Jonathan Brown's done it a bit for the searching lines. for rare examples, aren't yeah. we? Because he certainly does it I think Lee so many times. Too, just widely. Oh, thanks, Dennis. So <laughs> He's got a good memory. Simpson's <laughs> kicked two. Could he kick a third and put the Blues in front, you betcha! There's Simpson, he's very happy with that, as were the Carlton supporters. It's getting so loud down here, but this, in this second half, Bryce Gibbs has done a huge job on Steve Johnson, who's just come off the ground. If they win, Bryce Gibbs, he can stand up. Wojcinski knocked it down, Joel Corey dragged down. Ellard did well, Robinson, Scotland. Out wide, Carazzo. Right at the interchange gates. Looks inside. Nothing on. Comes back and kicks it along the boundary. Target is Walker. Clears he and Milburn. Goes behind. Josh Hunt slips a hand pass away to Mackey to Kelly. We'll go to Varko. Varko on the other side. Chapman is on the burst. 
Hawkins wants it longer, but then both those leads fizzle out. He goes short. Enright, halfway to the men I was talking about, takes the mark. Hawkins offers. That's an untidy kick. It bounces down inside the forward 50. Podsy Adler got a hand to it. Stolen away by the brilliant Murphy. Got one forward. Murphy up to 28 possessions now. Here's Russell again. Generally uses it well. This one no exception to wait. Garlett was free and Kelly had to push back. Now, the role for Garlett would be to work Kelly over. James Kelly had to push really hard defensively and spell some, spend some petrol tickets. Can work him over as a forward here. Not sure about going from wing to half back. Thornton to the wing again. And it's going to be a free kick. And it's going, I think, to Russell. Back where Wade was a couple of kicks ago in a free kick. The worst thing, if you're on the middle of the ground and you actually your kick is going to go into deep into your forward half, that's the place you should be thinking of going rather than conceding game backwards. And that's what Russell does this time. Warnock, big fly, Enright at the back. Well done, Enright, to Milburn. And then Milburn off a step, keeps the ball in, Scarlett and Wright. Wright's been good, hasn't he? He's been good. He's a terrific one-on-one -on -one mark to Laidler. Gee, he's going to be pleased if the Blues can win tonight. An ex cat and he's done a terrific really job. Good. Back he goes. Russell. So a slowish build-up, but Carlton at the moment just controlling it, aren't they? Yeah. It's been a match of ebbs and flows. Again short. It's important for Carlton to realise the position of the game they're at. They've yeah. got control of the game. They haven't broken Geelong, obviously. It's still very close, but need to convert. Thornton to a pack. Wait and Warnock there. Hunt tried to get through. Harry Taylor held up. Carlton swarm. Boundary throw in Richo. They certainly are controlling the play. 20 marks to six this quarter. We know they love doing that. But Joel Selwood sitting on the bench there has not had a touch this quarter. He's had a huge match up to three quarter time. Cats need him back on. That's right. He won't get one there. Murphy miscues with a kick. It wanders across half forward, taken by Scotland. Back to Diagon. Diagon, well, that needed to be precise. It spills to Armfield. He creates his own space. Goes long. It's bending back. Hit the post halfway up. Wow. That would have been so big for the boy from Swan District. It's been a wonderful go of ebbs and flows, hasn't it? Oh, I man. mean, they've just been a tough. One side's looked like they're in control, and the other side brings it back. Five posters tonight. Three to the Blues and two to the Cats. We heard from uh, Cats assistant coach Brenton Sanders in the three-quarter time and preempting the fact that the game will slow down. How big would this be for the Blues? It's been 10 years since they've beaten a team top of the table. If they can do it tonight, it's a sort of match that can really launch a season off, can't you? And also 10 years since they won a final. So Warnock's kick, walk of the target with weight almost at the back. And now, is that Robinson across the face? Yep. Armfield chasing, boundary throwing. Look really dangerous, don't they? Wait and walk, just the way they're launching at the ball, providing a really strong, tall option for them. Boundary throw in then. Warnock, as he held, Otten's won it down. Christensen, he's been good. Releases Varko, pretty good after half time, certainly early in that third term. Stokes. Wojcinski can't get away, run down from behind, fumble from Hawkins, Laidler into the arms of Hawkins, he's going nowhere, and a ball up. Well, right now you would imagine the AFL would be salivating, they've got Collingwood up there, Essendon up there, and now Carlton stamping their own credentials if they can win this on Friday night footy. Just saw all the key performance indicators down there, disposals, contested possessions, clearances inside 50, all in Carlton's yep, favour, advantage. really just need to convert. Well, everybody stopped, Christensen took off, kicks inside the forward, 50 Podsy Adley was up, tested away by Jamison, he'll kick this chap and he loves this situation, wheels around, taps her back in front. Oh, that's all square. Yes, as soon as the ball landed in Chapman's hands, you sort of said, this is going to be a goal. The ball went to him. He had about a step and a half on his Carlton opponent, and he turns in such a small circle, and he's actually got such strength in him, on his hips. You know that even if the tackler has got a, an arm on him, he'll be able to finish from that uh, 30 metres out in front. 
Uh, the groin might have been a little bit sore from that effort. Premature revelation, I think, Bruce. Scores a level. And no one picks a level score than you, Dennis. Cam Mooney, uh, we've seen Chappie do that so often. As a cat right now, what do you need to win the match? Uh, I think right now, Bruce, just need to start kicking the ball in the forward line a little bit. A little bit quicker at the moment. We're just losing control of the game. Uh, we need our leaders to really step up here and do that for us. Let's see how it unfolds. Johnson, terrific first three quarters. Gibbs did well. Down low. She gives it a great job there. Played that well. Took on two of them, didn't give away the free kick. As he elevated himself, I think everyone's identified Bryce Gibbs as an elite ball user, but some of the defensive roles he's done, Brendan Goddard springs to mind. And as Richo said, Steve Johnson in the latter part of this game. He had good Zen Goddard in his last two matches. Uh, GG, they're good, aren't they? So Hawkins wins the tap. Christensen liked his game. Gibbs free kick. Bryce Gibbs. Stay there. So, uh, Gibbs, gee, that's a good Ooh. kick, wasn't it? What vision. Yeah. He was just there, you were lucky he didn't get away. Go away. So, Scotland on the up, uh, well done, gets around, runs his measure, goes with a long one, Wait gets ready, or oh, couldn't quite, Milburn, Garland, Taylor Hunt, got to be careful, ball hasn't quite come out, and then in the snapshot, is it a goal? It's Walker, I think. He likes to kick a winning goal. It's a behind. Blues back in front. Get your own lines, Bruce. <laughs> uh, 91 to 90. By the way, who doesn't like to kick a winning goal? It's a silly statement, I know. <laughs> well, some more than others. Oh, how put it. Terrific grab. It was wonderful by Walker moments ago just to find the footy in there. It was pretty. frenetic. Important help and over oh, help and doesn't overplay it, plays basic. Oh, delusions of grandeur, oh, help and perhaps of adequacy. He kicks inside the forward 50, getting a fist on it in right, roving the pack arm field, tries to clatter his way through. Selwood gave it to Mackey, Duncan, Kelly. Now an opportunity, Wojcinski comes out to Christensen. There's nobody up ahead. Has to go back looking for Wojcinski. Stolen by Digan. Clipped over the top there by Carrazzo. Gave it to Robinson. Robinson goes short and finds Armfield. He's 65 metres out from goal. His side up by a point. Wait offers and then pulls back. Play on's the call. Armfield goes for distance. They've got some tall timber. Warnock in front. Hands to it, couldn't hang on. Roving the pack, it's taken there by in right to Hunt. Does a little U-turn, then throws it in reverse. Behind. No, come on. 92 plays, 90. Or dangerous keeper Chapman Mark. So Carlton by two points. Bartell, normally good in a crisis. To Corey, how good he was last week. How good he's been for so long. Stokes, it suddenly opens up. Johnson's all on his own. Good play. Great mark. Great mark. It was great play by Gibbs because he was in the... He had no chance. He just put his eyes on the foot. He tried to mark it, which is all he could do. Otherwise, it would have been an automatic free kick. But Johnson was a strong mark anyway. Bartell, Corey, Johnson... We saw about five minutes ago, I think it was Corey and Selwood on the bench, so clearly Chris got rotating his mids. This has been his Achilles heel this year. He's kicked three, Stevie J. And the Cats are back in front. Lee mentioned just before the break, Bryce Gibbs actually couldn't have played that any better. He turned his body with the ball, but strong mark from Steve Johnson. Got the goal. That's the one he's been missing earlier so far this year, so good one for the Cats. After the bounce, Duncan immediately taken by a couple of blues. Along by four points. Close to 50,000. Knocked down by Ottens. There's the official attendance. I think it may have just been one of the members' areas that was deficient. Otherwise, they could have given the record a shake tonight. Free kick is going to Chapman. Plays on immediately to Mackey. Punishing kick inside the forward 50. Oh, terrific, Podsy Adley. Podsy Adley, fourth man in the queue, launched himself at that one. He's a good defender, Jamison. Uh, but Podsy Adley, when he jumps, he really gets that full extension of his arms, takes the ball at really at its highest point there. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> just went up with it. That's fantastic vision. But he just couldn't get his fist through the footy, Jamison. 
Biggest kick of the night so far. To make it 10 points. Bodzi Adler. Trying to work it back and he's got it. Geelong answer the challenge. Moments ago they were on their knees. I had a chance to talk to Brett Ratton today, and one of the things he said, he said, big forwards late in matches with the sub rule have become more important. Now, yeah. Jamison's energy levels here were fantastic. Nothing wrong there, but he quoted Cloak and Dawes and these blokes in fourth quarters. And there, Ponzi Adley, a good example. His first goal, but as Dennis said, the biggest kick of the match so far. If Carlton got a little bit left in them, they have been magnificent tonight. But Geelong have answered everything so far. Simpson inside. Betts. Oh, Judd couldn't do it again. No, he kicks the ball to the pocket. Diagon couldn't hold it. Rather, O'Halpin. Mackie. Betts got a finger on it. Simpson crashing through. Chapman's had a good last quarter. Hunt. Wojcicki. Neither of the subs have had a big impact. And a good tackle from Laidler. Trainers coming out left, right and centre. Popping in the head to Taylor Hunt right there. Ooh. He took the gap here. Uh, Simpson just went straight through the gap. That was really strong play. Hunt was the recipient of his momentum. Another marvellous game on a Friday night. Ten points the difference. Warnock could have almost got a free there. Corey to no one in particular. And the bounce it around was Russell. Selwood gave it off. Kelly came back to Enright. Floats it up towards the wing. Knocked away from Johnson, recovers brilliantly. The old look away hand pass if you don't mind. Selwood trying to knock it forward, did enough. Christensen inside the forward 50. Oh, wonderful stuff by Diger. Just stepping in front of his opponent there, Barco, and taking the mark. He's virtually extinguished the fire from Barco. Carrazza, little short and ideas right here. Kicks towards the wing. Oh, too easy. Thornton takes the mark, oh. plays on immediately. Robinson. Now Betts with a chance here. Mackie getting back. Taylor Betts cleverly done. Wait, wait, yes. Wait for it. Carlton a better side. I reckon Diagon and Labor is a big part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No it was, doubt. It was Carlton's ability to take the game on from half back. Diagon took the contested mark, which got the intercept back from Geelong, but took the game on. They have to go out and win the game. They're obviously uh, still four points behind. See the play on here. It was Robinson on this yeah. occasion, but took the risk. Got, got going. Eddie Betts played the situation really well off Andrew Mackey and got ahead. It's all about work right now. You've just got to win the contest. The players are tired. Put your head over the ball and go. Particularly these centre bounces, these centre bounce contests are so critical because that's the one time you can get it into a uh, forward line where the defence are at least one on one. They're not zoning off, dropping back into space. Rucks go at it. Warnock knocks it down. High tackle on Murphy gets the free kick. Plays on immediately. Walker, Scotland, who's a good kick, goes inside the forward 50. Perfect kick. Waits taking the mark. Completely. Different goal if he is to kick a goal right here than the last one. Outside of the bit in the goal square. Now from long range. Can he do it all? Sends it long. He can do it all. No. Touched right on the line by Milburn. The hand of experience. Should have had a few more players on the line, Carlton, to make sure that the defender couldn't really jump unopposed, but uh, might have created the goal. Stokes a slow kick. That's a great mark in right. So the Cats on Friday night say so beat the Saints by a point, they beat Collingwood yep. by three, and they're sitting on a three-point lead at the moment. Bodzi Adley, not quite. Jamison and Scotland. I've just got to get okay, this in, and maybe... Back, back. I'll get it in in a minute. Scotland, building forward. Judd bursting, can't quite. Quick kick away by Milburn. Digan. Still Diagon. Awkward handball. Diagon again. Can they open it up? Russell. Murphy's quick. We know that. Looks up. Kicks the ball to half forward. Wait. Beautiful hands. Held up. One of oh. 50. Called to play on. And then wait. Lovely oh, stuff. Jeez, played right today, right? I'll tell you what the sub rule's done. 
It's brought back the winning of the contest late in quarters, how important, but also the people who can use the ball. Oh, yeah. You've you get got a little bit more time and space, don't you? So you've got to be able to use that. Waite and Walker are a good double act right now, aren't they? Yep. Walker's kicked two, Waite's kicked two. They've been the most likely, haven't they? Oh, not a good kick. Oh, no. Almost. No, oh, high nice. tackle. Warlock's free. Robbie Warlock is fine. You could just see the space, couldn't you, between the well, the floating ball and Warlock. Yes, I have, mate. Too high. Warlock's 200 centimetres, and I guess the high tackle was the only thing really that stopped him taking the mark. The ball dropped, no, no dispute there. Yep. And right, the right arm over the shoulder. But Lee's right, the ball just dropped short. Warnock had the clear run at it. Desperation effort. Just hope he's fit to take it. He's going to take it, but just hope he's shaking off the cobwebs, eh? They're pretty high up, those cobwebs. Now, that's the danger. Yeah. And the interesting thing was the man closest was Garland. Enright's kick not particularly good. Hasn't Scotland played a game? No, Generally does. I don't think he's quite got the length. 55 metres out. Sets it up again. Where's the big guy? Nowhere to be seen. In front, guess who? Scarlett on his chest to be down to the last minute. Now, just needs to find the teammate. Watch Harry, number seven. He's wanting some space there. Work hard enough to lock it in. Don't allow the loose. Well, Scarlett's gone for distance to a contest. Taken by Duncan, pushed off it. Kelly slips a hand pass away. Corey, now it's one on one. Scotland is coming back as the extra man. Up is Podsy Adley, takes possession. Slips it away, still trying to soccer it forward. Down to 29 seconds. Gibbs, oblivious to that, goes after the football. Wedged out of there by Johnson. Clock stops at 22. Well, it can't be a draw, Bruce. Both sides, runners running out. They'll tell exactly how long to go. 22 seconds. The Geelong run will be right at that stoppage, explicitly telling the players. Remember, the Cats have won Friday night footy by a point and three points so far this year. They lead by two right now. Seconds ticking away. Carlton one, last roll of the dice. Scarlet. Fair Deacon, unbelievable, you betcha. That was the match we had tonight. Back there, eh? well, what, what's been in the past and what will always be at the club 
Tell you what, Carlton have gained some ground again tonight, I think, even in defeat. I'll say. Yeah, they're a very solid team, and you've said it during the call, Bruce, that Dygan and Laidley have just fitted in really well to give that defence stability. Yep. And uh, Geelong got them every now and again because Geelong are a classy team, but uh, they have got a bit of strength about them, no doubt. Let's go down to Ridge. Well, Chappie, you've had some big games on Friday night this year, another close one. Yeah, it was, and we knew it was going to be exactly like that too. They've um, had a good start to the year, the Blues, and we knew they'd come out hard. And Unfortunately, we didn't come out and match them early and it made the rest of the day hard for all the night hard for us. So, um, look, we, you know, we plugged away at it and come out with a win. It was good by the boys. They are an improved opposition, though, the boys. They've stepped it up this year. Most definitely. I mean, their pressure and, you know, they are uh, got some blokes who work hard both ways and they're very damaging when they get the ball in their hands and running forward. Joel Selwood, again, the first three quarters was outstanding. Amazing. He just never stops. He uh, in and under and he just, he missed a reliable for us. Do you reckon he'll Twitter something after the game? No doubt, he loves it. He's on there every day. He is. Well, well done, Mike. Thanks, Richard. Nice work, Richard. Well, Tom, a few weeks back we were thinking perhaps it was hard to find someone to rival Collingwood. Well, in the last seven days, the contenders are coming out of the woodwork. He hit the nail on the head during the call, Dennis, when you mentioned, obviously, Collingwood are up and about. Carlton are certainly thereabouts. Essendon, too. And Geelong probably rounding out the top four sides at the moment. So it's a... Uh, Really exciting stage of the competition. It's starting to uh, starting to take shape. Absolute thriller. Geelong win on Friday night football here at Etihad Stadium. They remain undefeated, but only just. Last gasp victory, 15-12 to 14-16.